Eat my shorts. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to the Dave Lee Down Under podcast. I'm, of course, your host, Dave Lee, and this is episode number 52. Danny LaRue, 52. What the fuck is that? Danny LaRue. Yeah. Danny, well, Danny LaRue was a, um, he was a drag queen. Oh, yeah. A, uh, I think Irish singer, performer, and drag queen. Well, there you go. I actually saw Danny LaRue many years Did ago. You? Hmm. British, obviously. Uh, Irish. Oh, well, you said that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because we're going off the British um, uh, bingo, bingo calls. calls. Rant, all of a sudden, you've started doing that. There you go. <laughs> should, uh, should have thought of it from day one. Should have. We can go. Th- let's spend the whole show going through all the ones we missed. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so whole episode. What did we start at? About 40 or something, 43? Yeah, a few weeks ago, probably, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> all right. No, look, you can join us every single Monday here on the podcast. It goes out on all the major podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music and Audible. Uh, the visual element is also available on YouTube. That goes out two days early to Patreon supporters. So if you want to get that two days early, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Dave Down Under. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get that access. One dollar? Jeez. Just one dollar. That's cheap. It's so cheap. It's so cheap. You get the podcast and you get other stuff occasionally. Um, We have the body... Really? (laughs) Really. (laughs) That's probably a better word. Gotta gotta make more effort. I gotta make more effort for that. Thank you for the podcasters. Times at the... Times at the premium. Patrons. Yeah. I, um, I... Thanks for the patrons for sticking... With the patron, I appreciate it. I gotta get more stuff out there. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is the the video podcast is on a second channel. It's the Dave Lee Down Under podcast channel. Uh, so if you want to head over there, if you're watching it there, you're there right now. Just hit the subscribe button. I need to get the subs up. Get them up. Need to get those get subs up. up to a thousand, and we're gonna get the watch watch times nearly there, which is great. Need those subs up. We're gonna launch a third channel. <laughs> gonna launch a third channel soon. We'll talk about that later, probably. Um, so that's just another one that you can go over and hit subscribe on that stand linked at the bottom. We'll talk about that soon. You can find uh, me, of course, on the main channel, channel number one, Dave Lee Down Under, over on Twitter, Insta, uh, over yeah, on, on YouTube. I'm also on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Letterbox. Links for everything in the description. If you want to write into the show, you can shoot them at DaveLeePod at gmail.com. If you're listening on the uh, podcast platforms, please leave a review and a, ra- a review and a rating. Just good ones. Because they help. The good ones help. Bad ones don't. Nope. They f- fuck you up. <laughs> they do, yeah. <laughs> well, sort of. Just don't like them. Just no bad ones, please. No. Hey, uh, cut a... Uh, Give me- an inferiority complex if you get bad ones. Yeah, I know. They do. Hey, I got a message this week from Bradley Kenneth on Bradley Twitter. Bradley Kenneth. Yeah, Bradley Kenneth. He's, yeah, a, he's Bradley. He's a listener of the pod, watcher of the pod. Hasn't he got anything better to do with his time? No, obviously not. Fair enough. Uh, he's he, he, <laughs> <laughs> had to avoid it, obviously, <laughs> no. because we're recording this stupid bloody thing. Exactly right. He tweeted me. He said, hey, Dave, just letting you know I've queued up your complete series of the podcast playlist on YouTube. That's the playlist with all 50, now 52 episodes in it. 53, including the oh, pilot? Oh, including the pilot. Yeah, that's in there as hey, well. 52, that's a year. We've been doing this every week for a year now. Oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> Jesus. Not including that pilot, which was a bit like a month before that. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Fucking hell. Happy year. Woohoo! Thanks for being here for this long. And those that weren't here at the start, thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate and get it. others to join us, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and get those hours up and the subs yeah. up. And yeah, get it all up. So we can start getting paid. <laughs> Got to get it all up. Yeah. Just the subs and the... <laughs> watch time. <laughs> the watch time. Yeah. Hey, so Bradley says, right, he says, Hey, Dave, just letting you know I've queued up your complete series of the podcast playlist on YouTube. He's got nothing to do with his time. No, that's a whole year worth of podcasts. Yeah. Uh, he says... An average of about two hours. 
Yeah. That's 104, approximately 100 odd hours. Yeah, well, he says here, right? Hey, Dave, just letting so you know, I've queued up your complete series of the podcast on playlist on YouTube. Long playlist, as we've established. <laughs> I've been attentively watching since I turned the computer on today. I will continue to attentively watch during the hours a lot of people traditionally sleep. Ooh. I said to him, I hope you are... Uh, said, I hope you are up and you are watching it 24-7. I can't <laughs> exactly. tell you. I can't tell you to just sit there and let it play and not watch no, it. No, that's right. I can't, that's can't against, do that. Not let that's it do that. against the terms and to, of service of YouTube. So, so don't, 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 don't do just it. turn it on and just let it run. Yeah. Let it do that. So he just wrote back. He said, oh, it. it's a little, oh, you, can't do, you can't do it. Yeah, he sent me like, oh, you know, the little emoji, like yeah. the oh, yeah. emoji. I'd never do such a thing. You can be absolutely, definitely, positively, completely certain that I've watched all 21 hours of the podcast, which has played so far. <laughs> it's good on him. Good boy. Good we on like you. like that. That is great. It is. Um, take a one for the team. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's <Bradley>. support. <laughs> I'm very glad you watched it all and didn't go to sleep and then it was still going in the morning. I very much yep, appreciate it. Exactly yep. Can't right. tell you to do it. No. So no one else, to. everyone else out there, take... Take Bradley's um, um, approach. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's right. Everyone else, Bradley is leading by example here. You need to follow what he's doing. Cue up that podcast playlist and just sit there and watch it all. I can't tell you to Just cue it up and off. let it run. Just let it run. You've got to watch it. You've got to watch it all because I can't tell you not to not watch it. I can't tell you to go off and you know, get a drink, have some food, watch a movie, go to sleep. No, can't you do go that. Go to the supermarket. You can't do that. You have to watch it all. But don't forget to plug your computer in so it doesn't, if you're on a laptop, yeah, yeah, plug yeah. it in so it doesn't run out of battery. It doesn't run out of battery because yeah. if for any reason you have to like go to the toilet or something and you come back, oh, shit, it's off. Yeah, that's right. Can't do it. No. So just let it run. So thanks for that, Bradley. We really appreciate that. Had a few people write in this week, actually. Quite a, like a... a um, Unusual amount of people wrote in this week. People must be people must be <laughs> locked in with nothing to do. I know. We'll get to some more of them as we go through the show. But uh, and that said, really, what have we been doing this week? Nothing. It's Sweet been a nothing. Nephil. It's been a nothing week. It's been a nothing. I haven't week. even worked or anything this week. No, you haven't. No, a couple of weeks now. It's been nice. Yeah, yeah. I've been working. Yeah, you hard, have been. Long, hard. Got my. Uh, James Bond Evolution finished. That's done. Thank God, it's out of the way. It took me ages, a month. A lot of swearing and cursing and frustration. And yeah, it's annoying me. You hear from the other room? Yeah. Fuck it out, man. Yeah, that computer's so slow. Fuck, it's just so slow. Anyway, it's done. It's out of the way. You need to buy a new one. Yeah, I'm going to once they have them on special. Um, I, uh, I did go to the dentist this week, though. That's, that was it. That was my... That was my outing for the was week. Your outing for the month. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my little excursion to the dentists, and I got the news that I was really hoping I wasn't going to get, but mm. I knew I was going to get. I have to get my uh, wisdom teeth taken out. So I'm going to go under. I'm going to put me to sleep and chop them, chop them out. Never had to have mine here because I don't think <sighs> I ever got them. Yeah, well, I've obviously got my mother's genetics because she had hers taken out when she yep. was younger. Lovely, thank you very much. All the good things in life you got from your mother, like yeah, wisdom no. teeth and all that shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Other things. Mm. So yeah, I got to go. I don't know. I got to go see the specialist and sort it out. Been referred to a very good, very very good specialist. So I'll go see go see them and get that sorted. And I'm mm. sure I'll keep you updated. There'll probably be a couple of weeks there where there'll be no podcast. Yeah, well, there'll be one, <laughs> well, there'll be one week where, you're, where he's talking about... <laughs> yeah. I've been watching some videos that people have done on YouTube. Like, Oh, um, you don't do that shit. No, 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 no. It's like people like the recovery thing. And actually most people are like, yeah, it's fine. And there's one person that was... The only thing that's worried me is this one girl, she's here in Australia somewhere, don't know where, but she went and saw the specialist and they booked her in for the um, the surgery the next day. Oh, really? Yeah. No time to think about no it. No time. Just, just do it. Just done. Next day. So God. we'll see. It could be a really quick turnaround. i got to figure out when I can see this guy. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so we'll get that done. That's It'll probably be. be a few weeks before we can get in the seam, probably. Well, probably, yeah. 
and then it'll be probably another month or two before you can do the surgery, yeah. I would think. Well, probably. Yeah, but this video was fairly recent, but she was also in a lot of pain. I'm in no pain. It's just like preventative. They're like, yeah, they got to come out at some mm-hmm. point. Compact well it. Just the bottom ones, not the top ones, but she said get rid of my dentist. All my dentist time. said get rid of them. She was like, this is the news you didn't want to hear. I said, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. But you get to have a good sleep. Yeah, I know. It'll be good. An hour it takes, apparently, 45 minutes. Yeah. And I'll be up again. I'll be you, a bit loopy. When you come out of that, you'll feel like you've slept for a month. Yeah, it'll be great. It's what I need. <laughs> so I need can't wait a actually I'm looking forward to it circuit breaker anesthetic yeah god can't wait can't wait so anyway that's going to be my excitement for I don't know when that's going to happen when I can be bothered to go and see the guy and that's going to all depend on whether you get to go overseas and shit well too, yeah obviously so. that's going to be number one priority but the good thing is these teeth it's not urgent it's not like I've got a lot of I'm not in pain yeah it was just a result of me getting a I had to get an x-ray for a completely unrelated tooth issue. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, don't, well, I guess we we're, were trying to figure out the the root of a problem with another tooth and they've discovered, oh, you've got compacted wisdom teeth. Not related, but let's get mm. them sorted out too. So anyway, that's going to happen and there'll be no more on that for this podcast. Let's continue. <laughs> um, but other, there goes you go, your bank account. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Oh, oh God. Well. That's the next thing that I've got to worry about, how much this is going to cost. So number one priority is I've got to get overseas and stuff. They've just announced that they're going to open up international travel, like unrestricted. Which is to double, be, to double vax. To double vax. Yeah. Uh, but you can go anywhere in the world you want. So maybe I'll just like go to Hawaii for a week or so. <laughs> well, they, well, they were talking about, they were talking about um, travel bubbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they right. just said, no. Nah, no, they're like, fuck you'll it. You'll be able to travel anywhere. You go anywhere. But there was going to be a tra- travel bubble with the UK anyway, so... Mm. So either way, coming back, the, well, coming back for you is not the issue. Yeah, you've got to figure out if we can get Alicia back. Alicia yeah. comes back or whatever. Anyway, but that, I'm pretty sure that'll work. That's out. number one. So if I can't like get a get my teeth out until the end of like the end of the year, I'll be like, nah, I'll do it next year. Yeah. Once I figure out what's going on with the travel and stuff. Anyway, as I said, that's enough. Oh, halfway through a hiccup. That's enough for that, for this show. And at this moment in time, it's time for... What a picture. Good, good picture. Yeah. That'd be so much fun. What we've been watching. And the answer is... Not a lot. No. Oh, yeah, I forgot one bit in the last segment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another good start. Yep. <laughs> I got my YouTube verification. That's the good news that's Ooh. come out of this week. A little tick. Yep. So I'm one of those tick people now, so you can rag on me. It's fucking one of these tick people, these people with the tick, think he's better than everyone else. Yeah, well, I do, so fucking deal with it. No, no, no. Hey, because I thought once you get 100,000 subscribers, they automatically give you the – they send you like an invitation for your 100 subscriber plaque and then they give you verification like at the same time. Yeah. I didn't get the invitation for my plaque, so I was thinking, oh, shit, they're not going to give me one. But I got that sorted. It's on its way. I'm excited. Um, but then I had to apply for the verification. Um, and so that was a whole other thing. But that came through within a couple of hours. It was mm. like, oh, you won't hear from us for three weeks. Thing, oh, great. And it got back to me like two or three hours later and it was like, you're verified. So I got a little tick now. So what, what do they have to verify? That, Whether it's you. That it's authentically me. So if you are someone with like a the, – it's, it's for essentially for people who have a public profile. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's like if you are someone who has a decent profile, and I assume yep. that they assume that a hundred thousand subscribers is someone who's whatever. Yep. Um, they that opens up the possibility that there could be other people impersonating you. Right. So, okay. like, if you're a celebrity or someone, like on Twitter or, or on social media or YouTube, or if you're just someone who has obviously a hundred thousand subscribers on the platform, someone might want to copy you and start up Dave Lee down under channel. Right. This is the verification that this is the actual, this is the official right. yep. place. Right, okay. So it's really not much other than that, but I like the tick. So I wanted it. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so I got the tick. Thank fair you very enough. much. And your plaques on its way. Apparently they've ma- they're making it and apparently it takes seven days to make and then they'll send it. I don't know. Awesome. I might just rock up. That'll be good. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. And then I can finally do my live. I've been talking about doing my 100,000 subscriber live stream. Yep. And I haven't been able to figure out. And I thought, actually, I'll wait for that to arrive. And then we'll do like an unboxing, a live unboxing and yeah. all that shit. Yeah. Oh, Maybe cool. be celebration out of it. You thought about what you can do with a, with a um, 
Uh, what do you call him? <laughs> I don't know. You're trying to tell the story. Um, uh, Patreons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So something, do something else with them. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Little chat. Chat like we did last time. Yeah, something live, like that. A live chat with them yeah. on Zoom or what? Mm-hmm. We'll sort that out. Mm. All right. So now it's time for. What a picture. Good, good picture. Yeah. That'd be so much Just another fun. reason to become a. Patron, yeah. Patron. Have some. Have a chat. Yeah. So here we are. We're now in the What We've Been Watching segment again. Fish, the second time, officially this time, yeah. verified, verified segment. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, really not much this week. Actually, I went through a bunch of catalog titles that have been sent in from my pals at the distributors, but um, not a lot to write home about, or that anyone out there would really be that interested in. We watched an interesting one. You watched this too. You were in here the other day when I was watching this. Streets of Fire. What was that one? That was that really. That was like that nineteen eighties one. It had a very very young Diane Lane. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. it had a very. It didn't look anything like her no, though. No, no, it was like no. Wow, unrecognizable. Yeah. Um, very 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 young Willem Dafoe. Yeah. Well, uh, Rick Moranis was in there as well. Randa, yeah. just, just a random role for him, and a bunch of other people. Bill Paxton was in there. Um. E.G. Daly, Elizabeth Daly, who does the voice of Tommy Pickles on the Rugrats, because she was like a singer. She was a singer and uh, sort of a, did a lot of small acting roles and stuff. She was in Pee Wee Herman. Um, so she was in it. Yeah, quite a big cast. Michael. I can't remember the name of the main guy. Michael something. Parade. Par- yeah. It was interesting. It's Amy interesting. Madigan. Yeah, this is, yeah, 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 from Field of Dreams. Oh, and um, Slider. Slider. Did I say that, yeah. Bill Paxton? Rick, no, Rick, uh, Rick Rusevich. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Slider from Top Gun. That's it, yeah, yeah. There you go. So it's a big cast, man, big cast. Interesting. It's like one of those cult films. Ed Bigley, too. Oh, yeah, he was in there, too. <laughs> Junior. Love Ed Bigley. Junior. Actually, it wasn't bad. It was pretty good, yeah. Yeah, I didn't mind. I was, I'm shocked that it's taken me this long to discover it or even really hear about it. Mm. It's one of those ones that was a real cult film. Um, and I found it like for like five bucks recently. I was like, I'll check this out. The cast looks good. It's got a good rating. It's like seven, seven. Or close to seven. Six yeah. point six point seven. Really, it's a really good film. It's like this really weird sort of like eighties. I guess you would almost call it like a cyberpunk noir sort of thing. Well, it was described. I read the description on it. it. Was a it was a um a cross between fifties and eighties. Yeah. So, so a lot of the weird. fashion stuff that used was fifties, the cars were fifties, yeah. but some of the fashion was also eighties. Yeah, and then there was eighties music and yeah. that's what I mean. It's like a cyberpunk sort of thing, which is almost like um sort of like a um uh it's like science fiction but kind of infused into different eras and like elements of like neo noir. Yeah. And like so it's just really kind of weird eclectic sort of thing mm. uh, it's, it's really good like the production design stuff was great on it yeah, it was good all that and the music's uh, music's very 80s but it's enjoyable there's a song in it at the end that was a very very well-known song can't remember it now but it was from that film it was the song that was singing at the end of the movie i can't remember what it was now my dream about you i think that's the song oh okay it's, it's, um uh can I dream about uh, you? <laughs> i don't know but that was from that movie it was from that movie back in the day when they actually like did songs for movies and shit. I'm sure, they still do it, but not that often. But yeah, hey, there you go. I thought it was actually quite good. What's the uh, what's the synopsis there for that when you got that written up? Synopsis was a merc- a mercenary is hired to rescue his his ex girlfriend, a singer who has been kidnapped by a motorcycle gang. Yeah, it was pretty gritty and shot in yeah. uh, Chicago. Yeah, well, it looked. I uh, think so. Yeah, it was. So I read it the other day. Uh, yeah. um, a lot of it was shot in Chicago. Yeah, it's uh, "I Can Dream About You" by Dan Hartman, Joe Pizzullo, mm. someone else. Um, Could have told you who sang it. I know the song. But dream I told you who sang about it. you. Ba-na-na. So yeah, that song was from that movie. Never knew it. Never knew it. Mm. But that's such a popular, such a well-known song. Um, but I never knew it was from a movie. No, I would never have. This probably get me demonetized on YouTube. Well, I'm not monetized on YouTube anyway. So <laughs> one day, one day it will be. Screw the man. Well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, there yeah. you go. And the, the, the dream about you. Anyway, 
they, the film clips actually from the from the movie, seen from the film. Oh, go. oh god, there you, mm, go. there you go. Yeah, sound from the Streets of Fire soundtrack. Great, good, good movie. I really enjoyed it. I thought yeah. it was really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's out on Blu-ray from Shock Entertainment as part of the. The Cinema Cult Collection, it's an older release, but it's still available. I got it on Amazon for like five bucks recently. I was like, yeah, I'll pick that up. I enjoyed it. It's quite good. Mm. Um, I also watched um, <laughs> I watched a version of The Great Gatsby from 2000. Um, this had Paul Rudd <laughs> in the lead role. I saw a little bit of it. Yeah, it was um, pretty rank. It's a TV movie. It's like a <laughs> lifetime, like <laughs> A&E. Paul Rudd was uh, as the lead character, um, Nick Carraway. And it had I can't remember the name of the guy who does who was the Great Gatsby, um, yeah. But it's like a TV film made in two thousand. It's actually really, um, it's r- really uh, close close to the book. It's like a, a very accurate sort of um, adaptation of the book. Mira Silvino. Oh yeah, she was Daisy. Toby, Toby Stevens, Toby Paul Stevens, Rudd, Martin Donovan. Yeah, a bunch of other randos. But yeah, it's 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 a very it's it's a very um oh, what's that word authentic I guess adaptation of the book. It's very close to the book, um, but the problem and it's 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 a pretty decent adaptation. As someone who who's really really likes the book, loves the book, mm. uh, one of my favorite novels of all time. In fact, um, I've never seen this version of it. Um, and it's yeah, it's very close to the book. But the only problem is, and it's a good adaptation of it. Acting shit and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But the only thing is, after the Baz Luhrmann film, which I adore, it's one of my favourite movies the last 10 years, any other adaptation of his book just looks so fucking minimal. Yeah. And it looks so just <laughs> dull and yeah. boring. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, I'm watching these scenes and I'm like, I can just picture the Baz Luhrmann version, you know, the Baz Luhrmann version. They're all sitting outside on the dinner table and the... Uh, Curtains are all just flowing in the air, and it's just that the camera is the eclectic camera, and then the way he cuts it is really jarring and shit. And then this version is literally just them sitting at a table, and it's like, Oop, shot, cut to the next shot, and they're just having just a normal conversation, <laughs> just sitting at a dinner table inside. And it's like, oh man, I wish I was just watching the Baz Luhrmann version. Oh. But if you take it by its own merit, it's, it's a good adaptation of the book, but it's just, yeah, pretty, mm. pretty cheap. And, yeah. Nasty. Yeah, what I saw, what I saw, I thought I'm glad I didn't watch that yeah, whole thing. Particularly compared to the Bass Lerman version. Bill Camp in it too. Oh yeah, he looked. He was very young in that. Was he, very was, young. The, was he the lawyer? Yeah, the in lawyer in, in the Outsider, which we'll yeah. talk about in a moment. Uh, but yeah, look, that's just come out. Indicator, not Indicator. It via Vision um, has just released it on DVD. They've just done like a um, box set of literary adaptations. And I specifically request it because I've always wanted to see this version of oh, The Great okay. Gatsby. I now I've seen it. I've ticked it off my list, so I'll probably never go back to it. No. But there's a bit where Paul Rudd does a weird little dance that made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you love Paul Rudd. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> He's the best. So anyway, that was really all I've watched this week, other than a few other things that people won't really care about. We watched a few newer... And when we say newer, we mean like within the last within five, the last six ten years. years. Yeah. Within the last 15 years. Uh, we watched something called The Reluctant... <laughs> Fundamentalist, mm-hmm. one well, we've been putting up for a while. It wasn't a bad. Huge cast. It wasn't bad. Um, it had um, 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 a Kate Bosworth, another Kate Bosworth film, a.k.a. Kate Hudson. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, uh, it had Kate Hudson in it. It also had, um, uh, who was the... Riz Ahmed. Uh, not Riz Ahmed. The, um, Lee Schreiber. Uh, Lee of Schreiber. Schreiber from... Chief of Sutherland. Yeah, that's right. Um. Yeah, Lee of Schreiber was in there. Uh, but yeah, particularly Riz Ahmed lead in it. He's so good. Yeah, he's I good. love Riz Ahmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is amazing. That's some good stuff. Everything he? he does, he is just incredible. He's the best thing about this movie. It was not a particularly great film, but he is amazing in it. And I'll watch him in anything. Uh, Sound of Metal, he was incredible in. He was in an yeah. HBO limited series uh, the night before. Uh, was that? Was it? No. Was it? Was it the, the night of? Was that the one he was in uh, a few years ago, or was it? Oh no, I'm thinking of another one. The Sisters, Brothers, Venom, yeah. Rogue One, yeah, Rogue One, Star Wars, The Night of, yeah, The Night of, yeah, yeah. great. It's such a great series too, yeah. and then this one here as well. Um, it's, it's an interesting film. It's about this. Um, uh, I guess he's, a, he's an Arabic guy who's living in America. 
in a post world uh, post World War Two post September Eleven world and sort of the way that he is um, uh, the prejudice that he faces and the assumptions that people make about him yeah. in this post nine eleven world and the way um, the way he's treated and kind of it, the interesting thing is I puts this spin on it because he goes he goes back. He's he's, back in Pakistan. He w- w- wounds up back there, and there's like this question about whether he's leading this kind of fundamentalist group over there. And the whole film, you're kind of questioning whether he is, whether he has, like, become uh, what's the word you look, I'm looking for? Um, um uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, radicalized, radicalized, yeah. or whether he hasn't. And it's kind of a question on it, and it kind of makes you. He throws it back on you to kind of try and. Figure it out, yeah, and it plays on you that kind of thing. Like it's 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 really quite good, and the message is really quite good. But it wasn't a particularly great film. But uh, yeah, his his um, performance amazing. He's so good. Yeah, well, I def- I'd recommend. It. It's long too, two and a half hours, two hours fifteen minutes. Yeah, it goes for a while. Uh, but he's very good. I, he's, he's worth seeing it just for. At a t- point, it does drag a bit. Oh yeah, it's long. Particularly that first. Oh, probably first hour, mm. hour and a half, maybe yeah. drags a bit, but then. Yeah. And Liev Schreiber. Um, he gets a bit heavier into it, which is good. Ray Donovan, Liev Schreiber. Right, Ray Donovan, he, uh, yeah. he's, he's sent as like a journalist to kind of interview him and get to the bottom of the story. Yeah. And Yeah, it's quite good. Check it out if you can. I enjoyed it. We also watched one called Me Before You. And this is one we've put on for put off for ages and ages. So because long. we sort of, just by the description and everything else, yeah. you think, oh, it's going to be so sappy, depressing right? and yeah. whatever. But I, it was actually really good. I loved it. Yeah. I really loved it. This is like a, based on sort of like a YA novel, like a young adult novel, sort of in the vein of Nicholas Sparks who did uh, The Notebook. And that's kind of like, and like if you look at the poster for the film, it just looks yeah. like Notebook and it's like, oh, God. And then for some reason, oh, no, because I, I'm – when I'm working and stuff, I've got my music playing. I have a Spotify and occasionally I'll have like a playlist of like film scores going and some music from this kept coming up. And I thought, it's sad. the score sounds really beautiful. Mm. And for some reason, when I was just looking through the list of movies, and I was like, yeah, actually, we'll give this one a whirl this time around. It's really good. Yeah, no, I, I, I really enjoyed the it. Sc- what's the score in it? Like seven something? Seven four. Seven four, yeah. yeah. I was like, shit, that that's really it. good. Oh, yeah, it. for sure. Really, really good. I mean, just, it was just one of said that we kept putting off because yeah. we thought it was going to be real depressing yeah. and yeah. because, you know, it's about a bloke who gets hit by a car yeah. and becomes a yeah. quadriplegic. And you Another think, one oh, of these um, people fall in love, a sick person falls yeah. in love and one of those movies like, oh, how many of these do we need to watch? But oh, so good. Mm. It's, it was not – it was a little bit sappy. I mean, you, you expect it from a romantic film. But oh, exactly right. it had a lot of comedy – like it's very very that's, funny. That's what surprised me. Yeah, I was surprised by yeah. how funny it was, and um, good drama and just everything. The um, lead actor, what's his name? I always forget his name. Um, Sam Sam Claflin. Claflin. Uh, he was in one Clef- of Claflin. Claflin. Yeah. Yeah. He was in um, Pirates of the Caribbean four. The um the fourth one. He was um remember. he falls in love with the mermaid and he's like the younger remember. guy that goes along on the I don't know if you watch you must have watched that one. Yeah, I've seen it. And he's done a couple of other things, but in the lead role is Amelia Clark. She is just she gorgeous, is isn't she? Oh, Everything she touches. Oh. I haven't and this is from Someone who's not a game, never watched an episode of Game of Thrones in my life. But everything never. I've no, seen her no. in, she is incredible. Exactly right. So I don't feel like a Game of Thrones fanboy is like, oh, Amelia Clark. No, she's amazing. Yeah, she's and very good. And I loved that one, that Christmas one she did as well, um, Last Christmas, which got absolutely dragged. That's the one she. I don't want to. I don't want to say too much without spoiling the plot twist in that one. Last Christmas, that one, yeah. Yeah, that was the one. We watched that last we watched that last Christmas <laughs> for the oh, first makes, time. Makes sort of sense, I loved it? that too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that one with, um, what's his name? Henry Golding. With Henry yes, Golding, yes. yeah, yeah. Really, really good. Um, but, yeah, this Me Before You, man. What a surprise. So surprised. But she's amazing. And also she was in Solo, a Star Wars story um, as well. Uh, yeah, she's no, she's, she's really good. Yeah, she's really just quirky. Yeah. Very funny. She's very, very funny. And she's got the most, uh, we're watching it, yeah. and she's got the most incredibly 
articulate, incredibly articulated eyebrows. Well, you know, the funny thing is, you mentioned that you said, oh, "Check out her eyebrows. It's it's actually a thing. She could actually make them do anything no, she wanted but to." But this do. is actually a well-known thing that she has crazy eyebrows. Like if you look it up on YouTube, there's so many interviews of her like talking about her eyebrows. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. My God. There's like an eye. There's a video she did on uh, Graham Norton. It was an eyebrow off between her and um, I can't remember who it was. Act, a model turned actress. I can't remember her name, but yeah, she did a little, a little eyebrow off sort of <laughs> and thing. And she could make either eyebrow do anything she wanted yeah. to do and yeah, bend yeah. it. And it was like, yeah. oh my God. But yeah, there you go. That was good. Like, check that out. I will, I will highly recommend that movie, even if not just for Amelia Clark's fantastic performance in that movie. Yeah. Very, very good. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, so that is the end of. What a picture. Good, good picture. Yeah. That is so much fun. There we go. Now, we're talking about a couple of new movies that just come out. Now, we haven't watched these because no. we're getting dogged at the moment yep. as far as new movies go. So we can't include this in the What We've Watched segment. I'm not really getting much in the way of screeners either. Well, no, because nothing's Studios. opening up. Well, that's true. <laughs> no movies are coming out, so I can't get screeners. I've watched one, I got one screener a couple of weeks ago for a movie that doesn't open here for like three months, um, but only because I had to do interviews for that. Oh, um, right. But I can't yeah. review that for three months, even though it's opening in America in a few weeks. Mm. <laughs> Crazy. So anyway, uh, this week, the latest James Bond movie opened, James Bond number 25, No Time to Die. Oh, I'm excited to see this one. Yeah. <laughs> Knew you would be. Yeah. Now this is open. Like hell I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is open now in America and the UK. Opens at the, at the time we're recording this on Friday, it opens today. So by the time everyone out there is listening, it's open. Go and check it out if you feel safe enough to go to a cinema. But it won't open in Australia till the 11th of November, so it's going to be a little while till we get to see it, or I get to see it, because you probably won't be that interested. Uh, well, I'll probably see it. but We've got some... Uh, well, you didn't even watch the last one. Didn't I? No. That's how interested <laughs> I am. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, shit, the last one anyway. But this one here, the Rotten Tomatoes reviews are in, of course. Um, it's got 83%. At mm. the moment, which is okay. If you compare these to the other Daniel Craig films, um, Casino Royale has a 94%. Uh, Quantum of Solace, 64 Shit. Um, Skyfall had a 92%. Is Skyfall the one I didn't mind? No, Skyfall is the one we saw at the movies and you liked, yeah. Yeah. Skyfall, 92%. And Spectre, 63%. Shit. Mm. So it's like every second Daniel Craig movie has been good. <laughs> so I'm hoping this one is going to be good. Um, it has overwhelmingly, obviously 83%, it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews. We'll go through a few that I've pulled off Rotten Tomatoes since we can't give our own take on this. Joe Morgenstern from the Wall Street Journal uh, says, The new instalment is exciting for its energy and scale despite its flaws and derivative themes. Makes a lovely valediction for its star. Kevin Ma, or Kevin Ma from The Times in the UK gives it five stars. And says it's better than good, it's magnificent. So uh, you a James Bond fan. <laughs> maybe. Uh, <laughs> Philip D. Semlin from Time Out says, by whatever metrics you measure a Bond film, uh, movie, sorry, tight plotting, gnarly villains, emotional sincerity, Craig's final outing is a rip-roaring success. Stephanie Zakarak from Time says, with his fifth movie as 007, Craig is extraordinary. He leaves only scorched earth. He's so extraordinary, he leaves only scorched earth behind. There'll be other bonds for those who want them. For everyone else, there's Craig. Mm. Um, Owen Gleiberman of Variety says, No Time to Die is a terrific movie, and up to the minute, down to the wire, James Bond thriller with a satisfying neoclassical edge. Ooh, if that doesn't make you want to go and see it, mm. don't know what else will. How about Leah Greenblatt from Entertainment Weekly who says, As Bond swan songs go, it's a fond farewell, faithfully bridging the old world and the new until the last deathless postscript. Um, and there's a bunch of other like five-star reviews. Nicholas Barber from the BBC gives it five, says it's the longest Bond movie of all. It feels long too, but it packs in so much you can hardly complain. Uh, got a bunch of other great, like, good reviews. Empire Magazine gives it four stars. Uh, it says it dutifully ticks all the boxes, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a couple of rotten reviews on there, though. Sam Adams from Slate says, by the end, the movie itself feels uh, feels worn out, uncertain what it is we're all doing here. That's probably the camp you might fall into. Yep. Uh, Vanity Fair, Richard Lawson from Vanity Fair says, what follows those bursts of typical Bondian Elan is ponderously weighted and thinly plotted. 
leave this sombre serialisation to other franchises and let 007 get back to business, which should ideally be a pleasure. Uh, Scott Mendelson of Forbes says No Time to Die is pretty good when it's focused on just being the next James Bond movie, but it stumbles in the back half as a direct sequel to Spectre. Mm. So it's not something that the Bond films have often done before the Craig era. Right. uh, Being sort of connected not the other that ones I, are not just, that I know because yeah, I never really the other ones me. are just sort of like little one-off movies don't really yeah. connect or anything like that. <clears throat> so there you go. That's sort of um, overwhelmingly positive reviews, but it's mm. pretty much exactly what I was probably expecting from that, to be honest. Yeah. Well, the thing that puts me mo- puts me off most of all is Daniel Craig. He's always got that yeah. who farted smell, uh, smell look on his Duck face. Sorry, who farted look on, on his face. Duck face. Duck yeah. face or yeah. cat's ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't it's know. The only expression. He Trailers has. ain't doing it for me. I was not a fan of Spectre. I ha- in fact, I really, really did not like Spectre. Um, so it's like drag myself to go and see two hour and forty five minute Bond Ooh. film is, that follows up. That is going to be um, it's going to be a challenge. But hopefully, like it sound like people are saying it's good. So I'm gonna. I'm going to go with an open mind, hopefully. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll wait to watch it at home and I can fall asleep in the couch. Yeah, well, I want to buy, like, the... Uh, I'm sure they'll do, like, a 4K box set of the Craig films. I'm going to buy it and probably watch yeah. through them all again. There you go. All right, so uh, we can't give any further thoughts on the movie. No, because we've not seen it. <laughs> seen it. No, for a while. There's another one that's come out this week. Venom 2. Let There Be Carnage. The second Venom movie, obviously, oh, in the title. Hanging for this one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, this one's open. I think it's open now in the UK and the US as well. It won't open here until the 25th of November. Oh, I hope it's 25th of November in about five <laughs> years' time. Well, this one has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 57. That's the critic score. Does not surprise me. Yeah, 57 critics. Audiences, though, 89%. Mm. Um, the first movie had a 30% critics and an 81% audience. So it's a little bit up on that. So hopefully it's um, slightly better than that. It was pretty bad, the first one. Dreadful. I'm expecting absolutely nothing from that. Well, let's we want to read some Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> there is, that said, though, that this is like it's only just come out, so there's plenty of time for that score to come down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Both the critics and the audience. So we'll just keep that in mind. Okay, so a vast majority of these reviews... Um, are, well, I won't say the vast majority, but quite a lot of these reviews are rotten. David Sims from The Atlantic says the viewing experience is like going to a nightclub and having someone scream the plot in your ear over a thumping bass line. Ironic, given that Venom's biggest weakness is sound waves. Uh, Alex Bentley of Culture Map says uh, the movie is even worse than the dog of a film that was the original. I'd love to say that this is the last we'll see of the character, but an end credits teaser strongly hints at a return very oh, soon. God. Uh, Carla Hay from Culture Mix uh, says the movie is like the 2018 Venom movie on meth. It's filled with loud, scatterbrained nonsense, gibberish dialogue, and repetitive hyperactivity, resulting in one giant, annoying headache. Uh, Jeffrey M. Anderson of Common Sense Media says, with poorly chosen comedy moments, in inverted inverted uh, quotation marks, uh, the, uh, poorly chosen comedy moments that consist mainly of shouting and action elements that are mainly noise and smashing, this sequel misses every chance to come together in a satisfying way. Nicholas Sahl of the San Francisco Chronicle says, it's the worst movie Tom Hardy ever made, it's the worst movie Woody Harrelson ever made, and it's the worst movie Michelle Williams ever made. Oh, <laughs> it's scathing, aren't they? <laughs> All oh, of them, God. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got some fresh ones. We'll balance it out. There's a few fresh reviews. This is a fresh review. This is, in essence, a slapstick bloodbath about two threesomes both in desperate need, need of thrapples therapy. That's barely a yeah, positive <laughs> review, isn't that, it? That's kind of a, that'll be a running theme with these fresh reviews. Katie Walsh of the Tribune says, doesn't have that sense of joyful discovery and gleeful mischief that the first film did because it's obviously now a comedy on purpose. But the venom eddy dynamic remains the best buddy action comedy going these days. Caitlin Booth of Bleeding Cool says Venom, let there be carnage, knows exactly what it wants to be, shows up and then ends before it gets overly long. Keep in mind this movie is like 93 minutes long or something. Rid- oh, really? Ridiculously short for a superhero film. She says, while not a great movie, it's much more tonally consistent than the first one and leans into the things that worked. 
uh, Joe Morganson, Wall, Wall Street Journal, to to its perverse credit, Venom 2, as it's being called, manipulates its audience with all the tentacles it can deploy, most of them cheerfully ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Courtney mm. Howard, Courtney Howard uh, of Fresh. I know she writes for a bunch of uh, news uh, of, of newspapers and journals and stuff to simultaneously be outlandishly hysterical, surprisingly sweet and baffling, uh, bafflingly middling is quite the feat. Something this sequel achieves. Oh God. So there you go. It's Even sort the of... positive ones weren't very positive. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, God, I'm not looking forward to that. No, I don't, I don't even know if I'll watch that to be fair. Probably will. Going to have to watch it. Yeah. It's only an hour and a half out of your life. But it's an hour and a half, you won't get back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear. So, yeah, there you go. That's Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage. Look, the first one was, it It was fun because it was just so fucking stupid. But yeah. it was an absolute shit movie. Oh, it was a dog of a film. dog of a film. As whoever it was that said that, called it and a dog. And that's just our opinion. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, exactly. If you love it, good on you. Yep. I know people who fucking love it. Yep. And I'm like, no, it's crap. <laughs> like, good on you if you like it. That's that's fine. Anyway, we'll see it. I'm sure we'll have some fun because it sounds just so fucking dumb. That'd so be something dumb. the world's worst manager enjoyed, wouldn't it? Yeah, probably. Uh, no, no, I don't know if he really even likes superhero stuff oh, okay. at all, other than like the Nolan Batman films. Mm. That's like it for him because it's art. It's artistic. It's a uh, fucking... <laughs> Wanker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Arti- it's artistic superhero movie. Oh, whatever. Enjoy it all. It's all art, my friend. Uh, we've discussed <laughs> in the past. <laughs> um, hey, let's get back to... What a picture. Good, good picture. Yeah. That'd be so much fun. This is the TV segment. So we went out of the segment. We, we came into the segment and we had to go out. We came back into the segment. We went out again because we haven't watched yep. No Time to Die or, mm-hmm. or Let There Be Carnage. Now we're back into the segment to <coughs> talk about some TV stuff. I'm glad you're explaining it to me because I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, we're back in. We're back in the segment. Right, now. we're back in the segment. Verified. There. Yeah, sure. we're going to talk about TV now. Verified. Uh, yeah, verified. Tick tick. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ted Lasso. We watched this week. Great. Still. Ah, oh, jeez, that's good. You know what I've just realised? Say it every week. It's good. You know what I've realised we're so deep into the show now. There's only two episodes left. Oh bugger! Yeah, I'm going to, have to go back and start it all over again. I, I am. Watch it. I'll watch it over again. I'm definitely going to watch it all. It's yeah, just such a good, a good show. show. I'm going to watch it with Alicia, actually. So she'll like it. She'll really yeah. like it. I'm telling you, every week, someone says to me, fucking hell, I watched Ted Lasso, finally. And I've smashed it yeah. all out. If, you, yeah. if you're one of those people out there who's not watched it yet, get on it! And then tell us how much you love it, because this is the best show it on TV awesome. at the moment. It is awesome. I just love it. It's so good. It's so good. They, could, make, they could do one of those every week of the year. Oh, I'd yeah. still love it. Keep doing it forever. Uh, do it forever and ever, until they're old, until they're dead. This week's episode was all about death, actually. <laughs> uh, the fuel. <laughs> yeah. Black black comedy. Yeah. Um, but a very good, but poignant show as well. Very like, good that drama might be watched something and, else about death, too, wasn't it? I can't remember. There's an episode of... Yeah, what did we watch? Was the episode of Mad Men? Her father died. We'll talk That's about right. that yeah, in a moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, very good still, Ted Lasso. Um, I've left stuff in there from last week. I'll delete that. Otherwise, I'll just keep leaving it in every week. <laughs> the Morning Show we watched. Okay, Morning, well, it's called Morning Wars over here. It's called The Morning Show over there. Um, this is obviously the one with Jan Aniston and Reese with a Spoon, et cetera, et cetera. Billy Crudup, who is so good in this show. He's mm. just so funny. Uh, yeah, it's good. Strong form, strong return. Episode yeah, two, yeah, yeah, getting good. And finally, what's his face has reappeared. Oh yeah, Steve Carell's back. Yep, yeah, it's good. That's yeah, awesome. Interesting to see where they take his character. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Mm. Mm. Um, what they do there. Yeah, only murders in the building this week. Yeah, it's a very interesting episode. Very cool. Yeah, it was good. Silent, like mm. no dialogue. Is just a like there's a, a number, just almost there was no number. dialogue at all. There was none. Yeah, no, you might be right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was all subtitles and stuff because one of the characters, his son is deaf and it's sort of told through his perspective. But then even when you're with the other characters, there's for some re- you know, particular reasons they are keeping a bit quiet and it's just all, there's like no dialogue. It's mm. just all, or they mumble or no. Really had a couple a of funny or... episodes of shows the last couple of weeks. Yeah, they? well, there's that Ted the Lasso. Ted Lasso beard yeah. episode. Yeah, where it goes in the bender. Yeah. And, and then this one. one. I liked it. I thought it was really good. Yeah, it's 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 uh, obviously a big 
experiment when a show do, it does an episode that's just so vastly different. Mm. Like, I imagine, I don't know, I haven't looked at the discourse on Twitter over this, but I'm sure there were probably people who were pissed off with that. But I think it's good, mm-hmm. and I love that they stuck with it to the end. Because you could easily do that for the first, like, 10 minutes of the show yeah. and then go back to normal. But they stuck with it right to the end of the episode. But, the, really but they good. did it so well that you didn't feel as if there was no dialogue. Yeah, exactly. And you right. didn't feel lost. You didn't yeah. feel any of the things you could, that, mm. that it could actually, you know, this is, cause you to feel. This is which was good. This is what's fine with, like, silent films or movies. You've got to read subtitles and stuff. Mm. It, it's a barrier at first, but it's just so easy to just... Yeah, yeah. To sink into it. So yeah, that's really good. They did a really good job of it. If you haven't got onto Only Murders in the Building, this is the one with Steve Martin and Martin Short mm-hmm. and, um, uh, oh, jeez. Uh, uh, <laughs> what's her name? I can't remember. Jeez. Selena Gomez. Selena, yep. Uh, very, very good. And Nathan Lane is in it too. He's terrific. <laughs> very terrific. Um, we finished The Outsider. HBO Limited Series, Ben, uh, mm, ben Mendelsohn. Ben Mendelsohn. Jason Bateman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, spoken about before. Yeah, Bill Camp. Bill Camp, yeah. Yeah. Um, what did, how did you think about what did you think about this series overall? I loved it. You loved it? Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed it overall. Yeah. But in the end, it, beca- it was a little predictable. Yeah, very predictable after like halfway, probably. Yeah, because we got to about episode four or so, yeah. and then we sort of discussed about what we thought it was, and we were. Yeah, right. pretty right. Um, it's, it's such a great, like, terrific show. Mm. I felt it was maybe a bit too long. I thought maybe it could have been eight episodes instead of ten. Yeah, it gets to, same. It gets to a point where you've figured out what's going on and they kind of explicitly explain what's going yeah, on and then right. they still take two or three episodes to get to the climax. Yep. And in that time it's kind of like, all right, I know where you're going, just get there. Mm. It's just really, like, it's a, such a slow burn series even from the start and that's fine. Like, I don't mind that. And it does it really well, but it, it, it does get to a point where it's like, it's a bit long now. Yeah. I think it could have worked as eight episodes. I think it could have even worked as a movie. I think it would have been fine would have been as a movie. a great film. Yeah. It would have been really good as a film. If you tighten all of that up, yeah. I think it would have worked really good as a film. Yeah. And I think that's a good, I think it's a good example of not everything needs to be a series now. Mm. Because you see a lot of these things, like a lot of books and stuff are now being adapted as series instead of movies. And I feel like you can pick and I think there are certain ones. That's that, because they're being adapted by streaming companies. That's what I mean. Yeah. Is it? Look, overall, fantastic. Like, I'd give it like a four star, probably four out of five. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrific. Acting's yeah. great. The Everything about it is just so beautifully made. But yeah, just, just that my one little niggle with it is it's a bit slow. And I think, I think it would have worked better as a film. Mm. I think. Yeah, I agree with that. So, um, it would have been a fabulous film. But if you haven't seen that, check that out. It's very good. Yeah. They apparently, it's based on a Stephen King novel, um, they left it open for a second season and HBO axed it. Um, did they, 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 they axed it, did they? Yeah, they said, no, we're not doing it anymore. Oh. So the production company is trying to sell take it to, to somebody an, else. But I don't think they're having any luck. But Stephen King, so one of his fairly recent novels, and I mean, I don't know, might be the last five, ten years or so, um, but he then, I think after that, he published a novella. So he occasionally does novellas, which is just a bunch of short stories. And one of the short stories in the novella is a follow-up to The Outsider. Mm. So they say if they did another season, it would probably follow that. So and that, that last episode was a fairly short one too, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was a little bit shorter. It was 46 mm. minutes or something. So yeah. really was, and the rest were like 50, 55 yeah, minutes. Yeah, somewhere like whatever. an hour, yeah. Um, and I, the, 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 sort of like... Because it, it, it could have wrapped up at about the twenty minute mark. Yeah, of, oh, of this that. one. I thought I thought this was going to end now. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I thought that. It, and I thought, oh, geez, it's going to be a really yeah. short episode. This one, mm-hmm. um, and for that last twenty five minutes or so, I was expecting this real twist. Yeah, but no. it never came. Not really. Thought, no. oh. It's just sort of like it was almost like a little epilogue. Almost, it just was yeah. just tying up all the little loose threads. And, yeah. And I still, I had a que- like one of the questions, I don't want to spoil it too much, but I had a question and I was like, oh, I don't really quite understand that. But then we watched one of the bonus features and they explained it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But I didn't quite get that get as it. we were watching yeah. the show. Yeah. I needed something else to kind of tie that back in. Yeah. Anyway, I think this show was what, last year, 2020? Um, I'd, I'd say check it out. It's very, very good. But just yep. be prepared. It's a yeah. slow burn and it's very predictable. And once you figure out what's going on, you just kind of want it to get to the end. Yeah, exactly. You're like, how much longer can this go? Ah, three more episodes. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it is. It is. It's very good. So now we're going to find a little, a little series to replace that yeah, one. Yeah, got now. a whole box of them down there. So 
Well, there's also that one on, uh, was it Netflix with um, QB? Matt Saracen? Uh, oh, yeah, name? Midnight Mass. Midnight Everyone's Mass. talking about this. Yeah. Apparently it's fantastic. I want to watch that. I think maybe yeah. that's next. We'll check that out. If, that you've, seen, really if you've seen it, let me know. Um, apparently it's very good. Mm. It's done by the guy, talking about Stephen King, it's done by the guy who did Dr. Sleep, which was the sequel to The Shining. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it should be really good. He's done a couple of series for Netflix as well. Which oh, we just started Sex Education too, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we started Sex Ed. Yeah. Which is very good. That's good. Such a great show. Fun mm. little British show. So we watched episode one of that last night. A great show. Great show. Uh, this week I'll be checking out The Muppets Haunted Mansion. Uh, that's a new <laughs> Muppets. Um, it's their very first ever Halloween special. They've never done a Halloween special. They did a few, like, episodes of The Muppet Show that were kind of Halloween-themed. They like Vincent Price come on and do a few episodes. But this is, like, the first proper Muppets Halloween special. And there's a bunch of, like, celebrity mm. cameos, you can imagine. I think um, Will Arnett is in it. Um, I, can't, I can't remember who else is in it. But it looks fun. It's, like, 50 minutes long. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. It's like, it's like <laughs> um, I think by the time this goes out, the embargoes may be lifted. But it's it's actually quite lo- it's quite long, um, a bit longer than I was expecting. So I'll probably watch that. I might watch that tonight or to, or to, to Saturday, mm. and then I'll have a review filmed on Sunday, and then it'll be out this week. So mm. check that out. I've also got screeners. Disney Plus sent me screeners for like four things this week. It's far too much. But I'll be reviewing the Muppets, and they sent me a show called Just Beyond. It's a series based on works of R.L. Stein, who wrote The Goosebumps. I was say Goosebumps. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. There's a trailer, so I'll check that out. And mm. if it looks okay, I might cover it, review it. The Disney Plus stuff t- tends to do all right with reviews. Yeah. So um, we'll look into that. Um, but otherwise, that is the end of what we've been watching, unless you have anything else to say. Nope. All right. It's time for... Don't say it. It's... It's the Mad Men update. Bong smoke. No. <laughs> Mad Men update. Stop. Stop. Mad Men update. How many did we watch this week? I can't remember. Two. Three or two. Yeah, two. We were going to do a third one last night, but it got a bit late. And well, yeah, because my video was fucking up. had a few issues up. and cracked the shits and, uh, and I tried to get it sorted out. And, yeah. And that was basically midnight last night. I was like, fuck. Yeah, when mm. I put the disc in, I was like, fuck, it's actually 12 o'clock now. It's too late. I'm going to bed. After I've got to go, I had to go sort that shit out, and then I went to bed. Um, yeah, pretty good. Mm. Still good. Not much yeah. to say this week. Is it? No, it sort of slowed down a little bit, I thought. It has a bit, yeah. I just hope it doesn't keep yeah, slowing down no, and becomes no. better, it becomes Deadwood. No, no. <laughs> hey, I accident. Fuck. I've seen a spoiler. For? Yes. Mad, Mad Men. <laughs> for what, the next episode? No, the, I think for the like, whole thing. Uh, yeah. Ah. Oh. Fancy that, huh? Well, for the complete, yeah, complete it, yeah. Oh, no, well, that's your problem. Don't tell yeah, me. Yeah, I was on Instagram <laughs> and I was on um, January Jones, who plays yeah. um, uh, Don's wife. Yep. Um, what's her name? Betty Elizabeth. Yep. yep. Um, and a cute little video that they posted from the show was them. It's actually from the episode that we watched this week, where you oh. know they're making the ad based on the Anne Margaret film by yep, by Birdie. Yep, yep. And it was actually a clip that she had uploaded. It's her and Don Ham on the blue screen mm-hmm. just dancing to the song. And yeah. it was like must have been part of like this crew video that they made. Um, I thought, it's cute. I'll read some comments. And someone like just like spoiled Mad Men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Now, if that was me, it yeah. wouldn't matter because I'd forget, I'd forget that anyway. Yeah, no, I won't forget it now. <laughs> Every time I watch it now, I'm like, I know it's going to happen now. <laughs> So who knows if it happens soon or whether it's like a spoiler for the end of it. But there you go. Two seasons in, we got five left. <laughs> <laughs> it could be done. I could be – let's see it. Fuck so we'll be on the second or third season? Oh, we're third, third season, season now. Yeah. So four left after this, yeah. four and a half. Um, it's still good, though. It's still enjoyable. And yeah, it is. Who knows? I might forget it at some point. But it's probably, nice. Probably it's just it really easy to watch. Yeah. yeah, and like, yeah A couple of the characters are really good fun. And yeah. Why well, couldn't – why couldn't they spoil Deadwood for me? And then I would have been like, hey, I found out how it ends. Do you want to know? We don't have to watch it anymore. No, but this one we had to, yeah. We'll keep oh. watching it. It's good. Anyway. It's but the happens. journey to get there will be the fun part. Yes, that's it. It's all about the friends you make along the way. Yes. <laughs> it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's like an hour. We're back. We're back in what we've been watching. We've got to exit. Good picture. Yeah. All right. Now we're. 
Okay, back in the Mad Men update. We're officially back in Mad Men update. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, now we go. <laughs> Fucking hell. All right. We're out of the Mad Men update now. Um, and it is time. Oh, just partner highlights. Talk about the partners of the program, the show. Yep. The channel. Random Space Media, of course, developing really great uh, discs in partnership, Blu-rays uh, and DVDs in partnership with uh, with some big studios, including Universal Sony Pictures Home Entertainment, Disney, etc., etc. They've got a lot of great stuff out at the moment, um, which you all know about because I've been banging on about them for weeks. Jumanji 4K 3D collection with the two most recent Jumanji movies. They've got a three-movie collection, Jumanji, with the two most recent movies and the original movie and Zathura. Cool. A couple of Spider-Man 4K plus 3D collections, including Venom as well. You want to check that out before the new one? What awesome packs. Yeah, and DreamWorks collections as well, all of those. There was a code you could use for them to get 15% off. But if you didn't you lose, if you didn't use that, you're far too late now to have to mm. pay full price. Yep. So there you go. That's Random Space Media. Oh, Keep- quite great little packs, though. That's terrific. But if you haven't got, like, Resident Evil yeah. fragments. Oh, yeah, the Resident Evil one. If yeah. you haven't got that, yeah, great way to get the whole, se- six, whole season, six whole movie. series. Yeah, six movie collection, 4K, and they're yeah. really reasonably priced. Yeah, too, exactly right. Which is That's great. What I mean. So you can check them out. Um, kicks.com.au. I think the code day 15 is still active. It seemed to apply to my cart when I double checked this morning, but I don't know if the price, I don't know if the price come off it. Anyway, you can head over to Dave fifteen. You can sorry, you can head over to kicks today. You and use Dave fifteen and see if it works. I think it's probably. I thought it expired last month. Maybe mm. it expired at the end of the month. It's the first probably. of October. Anyway, give it a whirl, see what happens, and if it doesn't work, you can complain to me. Don't complain <laughs> to Kicks because they're wonderful people. Yeah. Um, they've just released a couple of. I was going to have them on the t- on the desk. A couple of new horror films have just come out on Blu-ray, Universal. Um, Sony have just released um, if I can remember the name of them Escape Room 2 I can't remember the name of it it has like a a little subtitle on it and also one called Demonic which looks quite good Escape Room Tournament of Champions and Demonic they also sent me over a copy of Halloween 4K that's the remake from a couple of years back oh yeah interesting Um, so you can head over there and hopefully use day 15 oh jeez that's day 15 not day Hiccups. I did, but they're gone now. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I don't know what that laugh was. Uh, um, it is now time. Let me double check. I don't want to enter the wrong segment again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not that you should come today. Oh, all shit, right, I missed it. All right, all right. I missed my cue. You ready? Yep. For that once more. It's time for. Shite. Or. All right, all right, all right. All right, this is our favourite segment where we play a little game. And I'm trying to get... There we go. Um, of course, is the game where we get people to send in just really random, obscure titles on IMDb. And uh, we got to guess whether they are... Shite. Or... All right, all right, all right. Purely based on the synopsis. So we'll each read each other out three. And based purely on the synopsis, no actors, no title, none of that... Um, we have to guess whether we think the movie is... Shite. Or... All right, all right, all right. There you go. Mm. And what determines shot or right, though? The IMDb score of the film. That's right. Anything from 0 to 5.9 mm-hmm. is a... Shite. And everything from 6 and up, 6 to 10. All right, all right, all right. There you go. We say it every week. That's how we determine how we buy discs. Exactly right. Sometimes. Sometimes. Less and less these days, I think. Mm. We've had <laughs> yeah. a few good ones under yeah under six. Mm-hmm. We've had a few shit ones over over six. Over six, yes, happens quite regularly. So uh, this week, our pal Jeff, of course, monkey boy, monkey boy, my little monkey worker on his yep. little monkey tricycle, yep, powering the podcast. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, keep powering the podcast. Um, he's, he's, not, said, he's not there, Dave. Where is he? Going? Oh, fucking Jeff, where are you, little shit? <laughs> oh, he's overseas in America. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, Jeff. So he's he's written in. Um, <laughs> I'm not that mean. 
Uh, he's written in this week. He's, of course, the official scorekeeper of, the, of, of Shire, all right. Self-imposed. Self-imposed. And we, and we love that. Yeah, world's worst scorekeeper. So, yeah, goes along with the world's worst manager. Yeah, we love it when people self-impose roles for themselves on this podcast. So, so <laughs> saves us having to do it because exactly we're basically right. lazy. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I put You know how much effort I put into this podcast. Jackson said yep. to me the other day, Wacko Jacko. Sorry, world's worst manager. World's worst manager. Self-appointed. Says, when am I coming back on? I'm like, well... We're still in lockdown, mate. We can't do it until the end of lockdown. He's like, oh, zoom in. I said, it's too much fucking effort to zoom in. And then Tim says, well, if you put in as much effort as you usually on the podcast, that means no effort. And I said, that's exactly it. I put no <laughs> effort in the podcast, and doing a Zoom interview means I have to put in effort. Yep. Because it takes ages to sync it and all that shit. I'm not doing it. So I'll wait for the lockdown, and then we can get them over yep. and do a show. So anyway, Jeff has written in. The world's worst scorekeeper, the official. Self-appointed? Mm-hmm. Well, no, he's the self-appointed official scorekeeper of the podcast, but he is the world's worst scorekeeper yep. appointed by us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so he's written in, Once upon a time, there were two little Aussies who went to the film academy and they were each assigned hazard- uh, hazardous duties, but I took them away from all that and now they work for me. My name is Monkey. <laughs> Good morning, angels. <laughs> and then I think I think that's where he's expecting us to say, good morning, monkey. Good morning, so we'll try that again. So he says, my name is monkey. Good morning, angels. Good morning, good morning monkey. monkey. <laughs> All right. Cut that out next time, Jeff. <laughs> Get rid of that. Uh, congratulations on your YouTube verification, he says. The first step of the plan is complete. It's now time for phase two. If enough people want your 007 evolution, the vision could be realised sooner than expected. This pleases the overlord and he sends you his praise. <laughs> oh, well, he's smoking at the moment. but <laughs> I want some. <laughs> <laughs> you, he says, oh, he says you are both tied this week on China, all right? This is good for the plan. The tension is palpable. Keep up the good work. P.S. I've noticed how you never use my suggestions anymore. That's quite all right. I'll be watching. Till next time, monkey out. Your suggestions? What suggestions have you? I think he's given me a few suggestions and then I've forgotten about them. <laughs> he does. Yeah, forget about half of the shit. I know, he, ha- he does have good suggestions and then there's just so much I forget. Yep. Unless Fair I enough. write it into something. Mm. So remind me of what your suggestions were, Jeff, and we'll, uh, we'll incorporate them. He did. Okay, Unless they're okay. shite. Unless they're shite, then there's a reason <laughs> why I haven't incorporated yeah. them. <laughs> Um, so anyway, thanks again, Jeff. He has uh, sent in the score sh- uh, sheet this week, and he is correct. Last week I got three correct, you got two, yep. and that has tied us. Ooh. We're both tied on 33. Now the end goal of this... And we should finish it this week. For, it's a year. Well, yeah, it's the end of Shadow yeah, Right. Can't, can't stop Shadow so, right. no. so the end goal of Shadow Right is... There is none. No, there is none. There's none. It just keeps going until it ends mm. with the podcast, probably. Dies a slow and painful death <laughs> with the podcast. Okay, so uh. we've got some uh, new submissions this week. Um, Anthony has sent in some. Tyson Turner has sent in some. Fucking, of course, Devesh has sent in some more as well. <laughs> Even as if I don't have fucking two pages full of China rights from Jeff uh, from Devesh already. But he writes in, he says, Love sorry, he says, sorry, 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 but this is a good one. Uh, he says, also, just thought I should let you know. It's, it's a, he says this is a good one this week, the China Right, so we're actually going to do this one this week, and then we're back to all the other ones we got from him. Yep. But thank you, Devesh. You do appreciate it. Uh, he says, also, just thought I should let you know, I held a quiz for our uni taster session for the Cinema Society, and within that I used a knockoff version of Shire All Right. People seem to enjoy it since we now have a bunch load members compared uh, compared to before. But thank you guys for the concept. Uh, yeah. right. you should employ a lawyer, and yeah, you'll be hearing from him, my track him down. You'll be hearing from my lawyer, Devesh, <laughs> for, st- for knocking off Shider, all right. <laughs> <laughs> now that's pretty cool. That's good. That's cool. So, yeah, just yeah. just 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 give Dave a, a credit for yeah. it. Yeah. Say, so go listen to Dave Lee down on the podcast. This is where I ripped it off from. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love that. That's great. Just getting out there. Um, but, yeah, send them, send them our way. 
We'd love, we'd love more listeners yeah, over get them, here. Get them all to subscribe. Exactly right. Uh, Tyson writes in, he says, Hey Dave, here I am, back at it again with some more random shites and all rights. I planned to drop these off on you after all my other ones got read, but after the stunts that Devesh keeps pulling, I don't feel as bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he says, I do think, however, that I've scraped the bottom of the barrel that is my personal knowledge of obscurity in film. I seriously doubt I'll be able to think of anything I've missed, but nevertheless, I'll keep trying. Maybe a trip to my old local library will get the wheels turning again. Anyway, have a good one, man. I'll be listening. Thank you, Tyson. Thanks, mate. And thank you, Devesh, for sending him in. And, of course, Anthony has sent one in this week as well. So let's get into this. Um, oh, shit. Who goes first this week? Jeff? Uh, you, I think. I, I think, think I, I do. I, I think, think I went first last I week, think, didn't I? I think you did. Let, should I double-check it or should we just do it? Let's just do it. Let's that's just that's do Jeff's it. problem. That's he, Jeff's problem. Yeah, he didn't, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't tell us. No. <laughs> well, he probably did. I just didn't read it. Yeah, probably. I just forgot to take a note, but it's his problem anyway. We'll make it his problem. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. So my first one comes from. Yeah. Who does it come from, Dave? Uh, this one comes from Tyson. Tyson, that's right. This is the one from Tyson. Too. The one Tyson sent so in this week. So Tyson has sent in one. It says, mm-hmm. Jimmy always gets teased mm-hmm. by the football team for being overweight. Okay. As a school assignment, he writes about it in his journal, mm. but soon he finds out that he's not only not. The only kid in school with problems. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy boy. Jimmy always gets teased by the football team for being overweight. As a school assignment, he writes about it in his journal, but soon he finds out he's not the only kid in school with problems. Sounds familiar, but I don't know. Sounds crap, though, whatever it is. I'm going to say it's It's probably going to be all right, but I'm going to give it a shot. I think... Doesn't sound great. So you say it's shite? Yeah. It's a borderline one. Oh, no. All right, all right, all right. Damn it. It's only got a six, though. Wow. Um, and it's uh, it runs for an hour 18, and yeah. it's called The Fat Boy Chronicles. <laughs> Fat Boy Chronicles? What the hell is this? Must be my, my sort of film. Yeah. Um, oh, no one in it you'd really know, I wouldn't have thought. Cole Carson, it. Chris Burt, Christopher uh, Rivera, yeah, no, no, Kelly no. Washington. When was this made? This Let me was look at the made What's in... What's the picture? Fat Boy Chronicles. All oh, right, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an 2000, all right. 2010. Well, there you go. It's just an all right. Well, Fat Boy Chronicles. Huh? Mm. All right, I'm going to read you one. This is the one that Devesh has sent in this week. Thank you, Tyson, for sending that one in. Now here's one from Devesh. He says this one's a really good one. All right? Um, a modern-day witch uses spells and magic to get men to fall in love with her with deadly consequences. Oh, that's just shit. Yeah? Um, a modern-day witch uses spells and magic to get men to fall in love with her with deadly consequences. I'm going to say, all right. You're going to say, all right? Sure about that? Yep. All righty. It is a... Shite. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't. It was a... All right, <laughs> all right, all right. It just sounds so shit that it'd be good. It actually, I, I'm actually keen on this. It looks like a film straight out of the 1960s. It looks like your typical sort of like hammer horror 1960s horror film. Like the way that it's shot... It does too. Yeah. The, the and I you see so many movies where they try to replicate an older film yeah, yeah. and it just looks it yeah, doesn't yeah. look any you look at this if if I didn't know this was made in 2016 Oh really? Yeah. I would have I would have been My absolutely God. sure that this was made in the 60s. Oh, you was to say it looks like a 60s film. It looks like one of those Hammer horror films. My God. And I'm so I want to the see it. The way it's the way it's shot, the way it's yeah. lit, everything. It's perfect. Cuz they cuz you know back back then they when they like particularly those outdoor scenes when they yeah. lit them, they overlit them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there were no shadows yeah. or very little shadowing and all that sorts of things. They've, it looks like it's been filmed on film. Um, it's very well. We looked at the trailer here. It's got a lot of that kind of erotic stuff that you would see in the old Hammer horror movies. Wow. Um, but even the costuming, the makeup, every it just visual, it just looks like literally looks like a movie straight out of that era. Gosh, and um, put them away, love. Yeah, Come on. Geez, put them right. away. Let's go on with it. Put that. them away. It's called The Love Witch. It was made in 2016. It's a romantic thriller comedy. 
Um, and I'm really keen. It actually doesn't look that bad. Yeah, I'm keen. It looks What's like, what was its rating? It's got a 6.2, so six it's two, like huh? fairly... Yeah. Yeah. Um, it looks really good. I don't know anyone who's in it. Samantha Robinson, Jeffrey Vincent Paris. But see, Samantha Robinson, she looks like a 60s act- actress. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm just going, I don't know if I know her. In that? She was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Abigail Folger, I think maybe one of the... Um, Maybe one of um, Charlie Manson's girls. Maybe oh, I'm not okay. sure. Um, but yeah, there you go. I look at a lot of the stuff she's in. She's very like sixties. Mm. Uh, but there you go. I'm actually keen to see that. I don't know how. I think it might be like an independent thing or something too. Um, well, so you can know. get your hands on it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to look into that. Thanks for that one, Devesh. That's okay. So that's a good thing about this um, shard or right is that you actually sometimes discover some yeah. really interesting stuff. Yeah. No, that does look really good. It says in the post on the poster in glorious thirty five millimeter. So I feel like this was probably um, tech specs. Geez, getting real geeky here. Te- <laughs> technical specs. Uh, this was yeah, this was shot on thirty five mil. Wow, spherical. There you go, Kodak, Kodak film. Mm, I'm keen to see that. I'm keen to see that. Anyway, so there you go, the love right. ledge. Going to find out where we can get it. Yeah. Uh, okay, your next one is uh, a witness protection specialist becomes suspicious of his of his co-workers when dealing with a case involving high-tech weapons. Go again. A witness protection specialist becomes mm. suspicious of his co-workers when dealing with a case involving high-tech weapons. Sounds familiar. Sounds from it sounds like this there's a movie called The Weatherman with Nick Cage and it's like all these tech these weapons and shit. But he was a witness protection specialist, he's a weatherman. Yeah, they just walk around with a <laughs> call it a umbrella. Well, yeah, but was that the one where we had the, the, the bow and arrow? Mm, that one? I can't remember, maybe it was, I don't, know. I don't mm-hmm. remember. Anyway. Uh, I'm gonna say alright. You say it's alright? Yeah, it's it's alright, I don't know what it is, but it's alright. Another borderline one. All right, yeah. all right, all right. What's it? Uh, it was made in 1996, mm-hmm. runs for an hour 55, mm-hmm. has a rating of 6.1, mm-hmm. and has Arnold Schwarzenegger. I knew it. it. sounded familiar. What do you reckon it is? Is this Kindergarten Cop? No. Nope. No. Was it? Read it again. A witness protection specialist becomes suspicious of his co- of his co-workers when dealing with a case involving high-tech weapons. Oh, man. Is it true? Not no. true lies. No. Um, um, is that like a sci-fi thing? Um, I think it's sort of a... Mm, I can't remember. I've uh, watched it. I don't know, tell me. Eraser. Eraser, yeah. yeah. Vanessa Williams, James Kahn, James Coburn, mm. Robert Pastorelli. There you go. It sounded familiar. It was like something tweaked. I was like, ugh, I feel like I know it. And that there one came to us from Sam B. Oh, he did too. Yes, that, was, too. that was Sam B. That Sam. One. Sam. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate that. Okay, I've got one more for you. No, you've got two more for you. i got one here from Anthony. Um, I'll, I'll read the names because... Uh, yeah, I'll read the names. Eliza and Debbie are two sisters who don't always get along, but their relationship is put to the test when Debbie's life is in danger and Eliza might have to give up her powers to talk to animals. That's tragic. You right again? Yeah, go again. Eliza and Debbie are two sisters who didn't always get along, don't always get along, but their relationship is put to the test when Debbie's life is in danger and Eliza may have to give up her power to talk to animals. Sounds like shite to me. Yeah. Sounds like shite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely lucky. Yeah, I'm lucky in shite. It's a... Shite. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, though, because this is the Wild Thornberries movie. Oh, okay. Animated film, obviously Nickelodeon yep. series. They made the movie of it in 2002. It's only got a 5.6. Oh. I remember liking it as a kid. But there you go. You love the Wild Thornberries. I love the Wild yeah. Thornberries. Great shit. Mm. Great shit. Oh, well, there you go. The movie is sh- is shite, apparently. Fair enough. There you go. All right. Okay, Next now up. my last one to you comes from Gary yeah. Lidemont. Yes, it Lidemont. does. Um, 
And oh, I spread out the uh, title of the film then. Oh, please do. Um, no, it's okay. Do you want the rating as well? Yeah, um, yeah. An advanced race of alien d- aliens descends upon Earth with a single goal, the blood of eight million humans to save their own dying planet. Oh, it's going to be shit. He sends in all these weird, like, gore, crazy, weird, 80s, weird movies. I'm going to say shit. Uh, it could be like a cult thing that's really good. An advanced race of aliens descends upon descends upon Earth with a single goal, the blood of eight million humans to save their own dying planet. I'm going to say shh. It almost sounds like They Live, which the John Carpenter film is very, very good. But I don't think it is because I don't remember them having to save their planet by killing people. But maybe. I'm going to say shite. So, Sean? Yeah. Locking that in? Locking all right. <laughs> I'm going to regret this. <laughs> so you're saying all right? Well, I've done it now. I've flopped okay. now. Shite. Bugger. Shite. Oh, no. <laughs> Shite. Ugh. Worth a 3.5. Alien Siege. Alien Siege. Brad Johnson. Uh, Aaron Ross. Uh, Lil, uh, Lillis Lane. Nathan Anderson. Absolutely no one we know. Oh, no. Carl Weathers. Oh, yeah. Carl Weathers is in it. I think Carl Weathers may have been in They Live as well. Oh, okay. Maybe not. I could be making it up. Oh. Made in 2005. Oh, really? It's a TV movie. Went for an hour and a half. Oh. Well, there you go. Oh, no, Keith David was in They Live. Oh, all right. Um, all right, I've got one more for you. Yep. Um, this one is called Not Telling You. <laughs> um, okay, I'll give you this one. This one comes into us from Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. The affair between a politician and a contemporary dancer is affected by mysterious forces keeping the lovers apart. Go again. The affair between a politician and a contemporary dancer is affected by mysterious forces keeping the lovers apart. Um. Oh, jeez. I reckon that one is going to be shite. Yep. Yep. In. It's going to be shite. Okay. It is a... All right, all right, all right. It almost went all right, too. But the thing is, we've watched this, and it's not a very good movie. <laughs> it, sound, it sounded familiar. It's called The Adjustment Bureau. Oh, it's got God, yeah. Matt Damon and Emily Blunt. Yeah, no, that was terrible. And I don't remember it being very good at all. It's got a seven, yeah, though. Yeah, I didn't enjoy that much. Yeah. He did, a, done a couple of, he did a couple of shitty movies in that kind of period. That fucking one where he's like, what's it called? Downsizing? They play yeah. on TV almost every yeah. six months. Um, yeah, no, not a great movie, but there you go. It's got a seven, and it's a, it's a technically... All right, all right, all right. As voted by the masses. I wonder what mm. Rotten Tomatoes has to say about that, because I'm not, I'm not having that. I'm not having that Adjustment Bureau is that good. Adjustment Bureau. There he is. Anthony Mackie was in that too. It's got a 71% critics oh, and 67% okay. audience. Maybe we're misremembering, but I don't remember it being very good. Mm. Well, there you go. That is this week's edition of... Shite. Or... All right, all right, all right. Thanks again to everyone who's sent some in. Um, if you want to get in on it, send me uh, a bunch of shite all right to davelypod at gmail.com and get in on it. The, the more obscure, the better. Sometimes you get some movies in there that are very well known, like The Adjustment Bureau or Eraser, but they do trip us up sometimes. So just throw in anything that you think's obscure. Mm. Might trip us up. The yep. Wild Thornberry's yep. movie. It's good. Everyone knew it. Yeah. And if I, if you'd read that to me, the Wild Thornberry's one, I would have been like, that's all right. That's a good, mm. good, good stuff. No, it was shite. And I reckon that's why Anthony's put that in there to try yep. and trip us up. Yep. So there you go. Okay, so the next segment of the program... If my run, sh- if I can scroll past all of these shites or rights that Devesha sent us in to finally get to the next to get segment, yeah, there we go. There we go. It is time for one of your favourite segments because you like the tune. I got to put that sound effect in. Mm. 
keep forgetting. All right, we're going to take a look at the brand new trailer for Disney's Encanto. This is the brand new uh, animated film that's coming out in the US and the UK on November 24th, but here in Australia on December 2nd. Uh, that's pretty normal, though, even in a pre-pandemic world, for Disney to push the animated film at the end of the year a little bit yeah. later into the Christmas season, whereas America will open for Thanksgiving, mm. opens mm. better here over, over Christmas. But actually, it's quite early because usually they would push that till like Boxing Day or Christmas yeah, Day. Yeah, exactly right. So December 2, not that bad, not that far off. You know, we might still be in lockdown. <laughs> well, we might be. Fucking no, I don't think we will. I don't think so. They set in pretty, pretty determined to get us open. to just open up, and all those and all those non-vaxxed just have to deal with it. Yep. Okay, so this one is um, it's to, uh, we'll have a look at it. We'll take a look at the trailer, then we'll talk about it. It's called once again, Encanto. Many years ago, this candle blessed our family with a miracle. Our house, our casita came to life with magic. In time, every member of our family Cecilia, up top! was given their own magical gift. But Mama, why am I the only one that didn't get a gift? You're just as special as anyone else in this family. You just healed my hand with an arepa con queso. Gorgeous. Yeah, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. Really good. This one is, of course, Disney's doing this thing recently where, uh, well, they've been doing it for quite a while now, where all of the animated movies seem to have like a spotlight on a different culture yep. um, or uh, or nationality or whatever. This one is Colombia. So getting the oh, uh, beautiful traditions and people of uh, Colombia ba- uh, thrown into this one. Um it's directed by Jared Bush and Byron Howard, who both directed um, Zootopia, or Zootropolis, as it's known overseas. Um, it's directed also by uh, Therese Castro-Smith. Uh, Howard, uh, By- Byron Howard additionally directed Tangled and Bolt oh, okay. uh, as well for Disney. So they've had their fingers in quite a lot of, mm. of projects. Mm. Uh, it's written by um, by Jared Bush and, Castro and, and Therese Castro-Smith. Bush additionally wrote Moana. Great, one of my favourites from the last few years. And Castro Smith is her first um, animated thing. She currently, uh, she recently wrote and produced Haunting of Hill House uh, as a Netflix series and The Exorcist series, which I didn't know was a thing. Uh, but there you go. Uh, the film tells the tale of the Madrigals, an extraordinary family who live in a wondrous, charmed place called Encanto. Each child has been blessed with a magical, unique, uh, a magic gift unique to them. Each child, except Mirabelle. But when the family's home is threatened, Mirabelle may be their only hope. Uh, this one stars Stephanie Beatriz as Mirabelle, Maria Cecilia Botero as Mirabelle's grandmother. Um, it also stars uh, Angie Cepeda and Wilda Valderrama as Mirabelle's parents. And John Leguizamo is in there as... Uh, Me- no, Leguizamo. Is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, Leguizamo. Oh, I thought it was Leguizamo. Leguizamo, no, it's Leguizamo. Leguizamo as Mirabelle's uncle Bruno. It's got a decent cast in there. Mm. Uh, it's also got new music by Lin Manuel Miranda, who did the oh, music for Moana, which is great. He was in Mary Poppins mm-hmm. too. He did Hamilton, which is terrific. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. That looks gorgeous. It looks really great, doesn't it? The animation. I really, I've really look. enjoyed the, the this whole series of yeah their latest films. They just mm. said where they yeah do different do different cultures. Yeah, you know, like the um. What was the um, Sp- Spanish one? The uh, Mexican, um, Mexican um, one, yeah, uh, Coco, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was really gorgeous, yeah, beautiful. And the uh, the the Italian one, Luca, yeah, mm. Luca was from Pixar, so Pixar's doing it as well. And Pixar's done, of course. Ratatouille was in France, mm. and uh, just all these beautiful different cultures and stuff. A little getting a little spotlight. Ray and the Last Dragon, of course, yeah. Southeast a- uh, Asian yep. culture, beautiful. This looks really good. The only thing that does, uh. Does uh, the only little niggle I have is that these are all starting to feel a little bit the same, though, narratively. Yeah, maybe the story feels very much the well, same. So there's only three stories well, yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, when you've got this one company doing the same thing over and over and over again, mm. it just feels like obviously they're following this hero's journey story where the hero has to go out of their own, 
you know, comfort, comfort zone, zone and achieve great things to save themselves and to save their people and to save their country and become the saviour. It's the things we've seen in Star Wars and everything. Everything yeah. is a hero's journey. Yeah. So as you say, it's the same story over and over again. Yep. But I just feel like Disney has done this so much. Um, and even like Hercules. He feels like very much like Hercules mm. to me. But that said, I'm sure I'm going to love this because it looks very, very good. I just don't, I just don't want it to get to that point where you're like, this is, you've done it too many times. Do well, I've used else. that formula for so many years and it's worked for them. So well, oh, yeah, exactly it. right. So um, I was saying, if it's not broken, yeah, fix it. And they've all been great. Yeah. But like Raya, Moana, um, Coco, they were all sort of the same yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks really good. The animation's stunning as always. Yeah. As it always is. It's colors. Beautiful. Oh, colors are amazing. Yeah. This is going to look great. It's going to look great. Hopefully, we can see it in the cinema. That'd be nice. Um, this opens. Oh, I said I did say the end of November, early December. There's no word on whether it's going to Disney Plus, but I feel like at the moment they're really doing this thing where it goes to cinemas for like 45 days and then goes, goes to, to Disney stream. Plus. Mm. Then goes to yeah. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens with that. But I'm I'm really looking forward to that. It looks very very good. Mm. Very good. No, it does look Impressed. good. I'm look, really looking forward to that. Impressed. Yeah, can't wait. That is uh, this week's edition of. And now it's time. Can you hear it? Can't hear a thing. What is it? I haven't got that. I haven't shortened it yet. Oh, God. It's the breaking news. It it is breaking today because we've got some news that's dropped in. On my lap this morning, very Mm. first thing this morning, as I was actually just wrapping up the the, writing the podcast, this dropped in. The uh, Disney and Scarlett Johansson lawsuit's been settled. About time. Yeah, they've settled. They've finally didn't settled. take that long, really, did it? Uh, probably a few it's months. It's been a few months. Yeah, a few months. Yeah, These things usually drag out for years. Yeah, no, it's done. What did I say a few weeks ago? I don't know. You I, tell me. I said they were going to settle it out of court. I yeah. said, There's no way this is going to – they've settled it out of court. Couldn't deal with the publicity. No. Uh, Scarlett, publicity. This is from Variety. I'll read directly from the Variety article on this. Scarlett Johansson and Disney have reached a settlement over her blockbuster lawsuit that accused the studio of sabotaging the theatrical release of Black Widow to prop up Disney+. Plus. Terms of the settlement were not disclosed, as we said. We will never find out no, how sure. much. Uh, but Johansson had sought a $50 million payout from the studio. Uh, Johansson, probably about half that, I reckon. Probably, maybe thirty million. I reckon twenty. You reckon? Yeah, she won't. She won't have got the full fifty. No way. That 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 would have been a bit of an ambered claim. Yeah, yeah. You always amber your claim, mm. and I reckon when you amber your claim like that, you, you usually settle about mm. halfway. Mm. Interesting. Uh, she says, "I'm ha- I am happy to have resolved our differences with Disney." I'm incredibly proud of the work we've done together over the years and have greatly enjoyed my creative relationship with the team and I look forward to continuing our collaboration in years to come. Alan Bergman, who's the chairman of Disney's studio content, said he too was pleased to have resolved the dispute. I bet he is. Mm. Uh, He says, I'm very pleased that we have been able to come to a mutual agreement with Scarlett Johansson regarding Black Widow. He said in a statement, we appreciate her contributions to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and look forward to working together on a number of upcoming projects, including Disney's Tower of Terror. It's back on the table. Oh, my God. They called this off a few weeks ago. They were like, this is not happening. They They have come to very amicable amicable agreement. This thing could have just fucking blown up and just gone on and on. She could never have worked for them ever again. Yeah. That's what it was sounding like. It was like, yeah, she's going to... I think... I think she wanted to make a point. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think that's it. I think that's what this is about. So they could have have even settled for less than about 2025. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been just her her going, you know, here's a slap. And and they've paid her five million or something. Who knows? I think maybe the way it came out maybe made it seem a bit worse than it was because it became public and they kind of hit back at her in very quite hit back at her quite harshly um they said you know she was uh, displaying callous disregard for the horrific and prolonged global effects of the covid covid-19 pandemic and then disclosed that they paid her 20 million dollars for her work on black widow mm. it became very yeah i think maybe it I think maybe got maybe as it has happened in the media got maybe a little bit blown out maybe got a bit um, tensions boiled sensationalized yeah um, but it sounds like they've just I don't think Disney can do without one of their big stars oh, like Scarlett Johansson oh, exactly I mean right. shit 
But there was like weeks ago there were the the rumors that came out were like you know they were going to say Emily Blunt's going to come out and sue them over Jungle Cruise and this person's going to come out and this person's going to do it. But they were just waiting for that one person to come mm. out and step up. None of that eventuated. Like Emily Blunt's back on board for Jungle Cruise too. Who knows what's happened behind the scenes? Exactly. Though. That's what I was just going to say. They've probably they've probably gone okay. Well, let's settle. Let's pay you yeah. this. Let's pay you that. Yeah. So and I settle it. I think it was just a matter of. We need Scarlett Johansson, who is one of the biggest movie stars in the world, to come out and make a point yep. and do it publicly, yep. a little slap on the, the backhand of the mouse mm-hmm. and sort it out. She's probably said, look, I'm happy to sort this out. I'm ready to go. Mm. Just don't, don't, don't do it again. Don't fuck with me yeah. again. <laughs> uh, so there you go. And um, the good thing that's come out of that is, well, she it's all you know, positive for yep. both sides. Um, but we're going to get the Tower of Terror movie too, which is mm. great because I was very disappointed that it was going to go by the wayside. Never did that, right? No, we never did Tower of Terror. No. There's no way in the world no, you'd be on so, that. No, <laughs> It's Guardians of the Galaxy themed now though, so it gives me a little impetus to maybe want to – Same ride though, is it? Or same ride. Just repainted it. What they call – yeah, what they call an overlay. So it's the same ride system but the overlay is different. Mm. Yeah. So like how they have like Haunted Mansion, but yep. every Christmas they put the Nightmare Before Christmas yeah, yeah, yeah. overlay yeah, over it. Yeah. So there you go. Um, however, <sighs> Disney and Marvel may have a bigger problem on their hands. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> man, what's happened? A group of uh, comic of heirs of comic artists are trying to sue them, trying to regain the rights to Marvel characters. Oh, really? Yeah, this is from a Hollywood Reporter article. I'm going to read direct from it because sometimes it's just easier to do that. In August, the administrators of uh, Steve Ditko's estate, one of the original Marvel artists who did so many great characters, um, they filed a notice of termination on Spider-Man, which first appeared in comic book form in 1962. Under the termination provisions of copyright law, authors or their heirs can reclaim rights once granted to publishers after waiting a statutory set period of time. According to the termination notice, Marvel would have to give up Ditko's rights to the iconic character in June 2023. Marvel is facing other termination notices. For example, Larry Leiber, who worked at Marvel as a writer as well, filed termination notices over creations in May. Uh, The heirs of the comic book creators are being represented by Mark Toberoff, who once famously represented Superman creators Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster in an unsuccessful termination against DC Comics. The litigation figures to focus on the Marvel method. Oh, pardon me. The Marvel method, which is a loose collaborative working atmosphere where initial ideas were briefly discussed with artists responsible for taking care of the details. One of the complaints filed today uh, asserts. Marvel had the right to exercise, uh, to exercise creative control over Lieber's contributions and paid Lieber a pay per, uh, pay, per page rate for his work. So essentially Marvel and Disney are arguing that these artists were artists for hire. They were creating, right, yep. they were creating um, characters for them and that the characters remain their rights. In more recent years, there are actually um, laws there's copyright laws now that specifically specify you are an artist for hire yep. and you sign off on that specifically. So if you create a character for Marvel in 2022, you can't come back at them 100 years later or 60 years later and try and claim your rights to it because you've already signed mm, your way. Mm. Back in the day, 1960s, when you've got Spider-Man and Doctor Strange or these Thor, these are all characters yep. that are getting tied up in this, there was no such thing. It was just like a gentleman's agreement sort of thing, like, mm. oh, yeah, you're making characters for us. But now in the modern day, the heirs of these guys are like, you know, we can get them under the this. The law's probably because- retrospective either. No, exactly right. But Mar- but Marvel and Disney are trying to claim this law respe- retrospectively yep. on yep. it, and they think Disney is probably probably will probably win it. Mm. Um, of this happened a few years ago. Well, it's sort of, it's sort of fairly similar to my line of work, mm. where any image I create, yeah, because as we know, I'm a commercial yeah, yeah, photographer. Yeah. Any image I create um, for a client, mm-hmm. I sort of gets a bit murky because the images I create under my own uh, my own business mm-hmm. I own I retain the rights to yeah but I can't unsell them mm. apart from to the client that I've that's employed me to do them yeah but I retain the rights to be able to use them for self-promotional purposes yeah. but when I was working for a company 
I have no rights to those images at all. Mm. The company owns them. The only yeah, thing yeah. that I retain is the intellectual property of those. Yeah. So, you know, so but they, I have no claim. Yeah, and so that's, that's the same. That's well, the same that's the same here, here, right? Because they are saying that this this new copyright thing that they have is that you're able to these people are able to use their creations. Yep. But um, that doesn't mean they have the rights to the characters. Right. And what they're also trying to prove here is there are so many artists working on these characters, you can't exactly pinpoint one specific creator. Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, they're all working on these writing and drawing these characters. Who's the true creator? Who is the yeah, one right. who truly gets the rights to that? They think Disney has the upper hand, but they also think maybe it's... Uh, this happened a few years ago. Jack Kirby... Uh, the Jack Kirby estate tried to sue Marvel for the rights back to a bunch of his characters. Um, it went on for a while. Disney was winning. Um, but then uh, the Jack Kirby um, heirs or whoever it was that was doing this, the estate, decided to take them to the Supreme Court, which is when it gets really serious, and Disney backed down and they settled out of court. They feel like that's probably what's going to happen here mm. because, as the Hollywood Reporter goes on to say, there's a whole lot of weird, weird risks and ramifications for Disney in this one, if they lose, so for example, the right those. But for example, it says co-authors are allowed to freely use and license work, and they must share revenue with each other. But this means, and Disney consoles itself with the following fact: that whatever happens in court, the comic book author heirs can't block the making of new movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So they can go off and do whatever they want if they win this case. These heirs can go off and do whatever the hell they want with these characters mm. and stuff, mm. but then they can't stop Marvel right. from making movies of the characters. It's just yeah. it just becomes very murky. Um, they says a whole other. Uh, they call it an Avengers sized problem mm. uh, that Disney might have on their hands. They say the smart money should be on Disney settling. Uh, there's a really fascinating article from on the from the Hollywood Reporter. I'm going to link that below if I remember. Um. But if not, head over to Hollywood Reporter. There's a really fascinating article on it. There's a couple of articles, but there's one in mm. particular which is called like Disney's avengers Size Legal Problem. Very interesting. It goes really in-depth. I might uh, get on and have a look at that. Yeah, it's quite yeah, it's strange. I'm sort of interested in all that because yeah. a lot to do with fighting that sort of stuff with the company I used to work for. Yeah. How they wanted to claim all rights to everything we did. and mm, Yeah. And we sort of agreed that we'd, we'd retain the... We'd retain the intellectual property. Yeah. And, th- and that's where it gets a little bit murky as well. You were saying that who actually created oh, it. Yeah. Like I don't know how many times I had another photography, yeah. a photographer call me into their studio and give them some advice on on what they were doing and how they should go about it. So they went about mm. doing it the way I told them to do it. Yeah. And then they claimed the image. Yeah. Well, they've created the, the image under my guidance. Yeah. So who owns that image? Or based them, an image off me. one of your... Prior images. Oh, that's done several times. Well, which too. is the same here, which yeah. is like one guy creates Spider Man and draws Spider Man, then another guy comes along and draws Spider Man and goes, hang on, it's my character. And he's like, well, actually, I, yeah. I drew him first. That's right. Sort of thing. So it's uh, that's all really, I'm really sort of all interested in mm. checking that out, I reckon. Yeah. So Disney's having a hell of a time with lawsuits mm. at the moment. They'll, they'll probably finish up just going, look, here's a handful of money, piss yeah. off. Yeah, probably. They probably will. I mean, it's just, as, as the article says, it's smart. It's uh, a smart move. Yeah. That's the smart money. Yeah. So, yeah it'll be pay interesting him, pay to piss off. Yeah, these these things happen all the time. That's all. That's all they want. They don't, oh, exactly they don't, right. they don't no. want the rights to go and make this shit because no, they, they haven't got the money to go no, and make exactly. this shit. What are they going to do? Really? Exactly right. They yeah. just want. They just want their yeah. share of the pie. That's what it's always about. Give, just them, give, give the them their share of the pie, and they'll piss off and yeah. leave you alone. Exactly right. And I'm sure that's what they do. Like I said, this happens all the time. Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster, who created Superman. Um, for DC or whatever, the, what they, whatever they were at the time, um, Detective well, detective Comics DC, and then they lost. But I think I think that came to, I think the terms of that came that every time there's a Superman thing, it has to credit the family of, of Schuster and Siegel, rightly right. so. And it always has to, like, whether it's a comic or a movie or something, they always have to be credited or thanked yep. uh, sort of thing. And then they probably get, I think they get, like, a share of, I don't know, I'm probably making up shit, but this is how these things end, mm-hmm. and it happens all the time. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. We'll follow it. I, I don't know if we'll hear much more about it, but, um, yeah, that's another interesting one. Yeah. Yep. Um, not a lot of news this week. Ridley Scott is out talking about Gladiator 2 again. Um, it's always every couple of years you hear, oh, yeah, we're making Gladiator 2. 
never really happened. Um, this was first announced in 2018. They said, yeah, we're going to do Gladiator 2. But I feel like he's been talking about it longer than that. Um, but he's, uh, he's assuring everyone that it's his next film. It's going to be his next movie. He's got two movies out this year. Um, one is uh, The Last Duel, uh, and the other one is The House of Gucci, and he's currently working on one called Kitbag, which is um, a uh, bi- biopic biopic on Napoleon. Ooh, that'd be interesting. Not Napoleon Dynamite, Napoleon <laughs> Bonaparte. Um, but he's, he's assuring everyone that after Kitbag, he's going to... Dude, Gladiator 2. Well, he's been talking about it so long. He's probably, he's, what is he, 83 years old now? So yeah, he, something yeah, like that, yeah. That he uh, probably thinks, oh, geez, I better get this done. Yeah, exactly right. Running out of time. Yeah, yeah. Well, his brother passed away not long ago, a couple of years ago. Mm, that's he was right. working on Top Gun 2. That's right. Um, so he said, to, he was talking to Empire Magazine about one of his, I think it was about The Last Duel. Um, he says, I am already, I'm already having the next Gladiator written now. So when I've done Napoleon, Gladiator will be ready to go. Mm. So he's got it in the works, it's being written. Uh, apparently the sequel is set to pick up around 25 years after the original and is slated to follow Lucius, the son of Connie Nielsen's Lucilla and nephew of Joaquin Phoenix's power-hungry and immoral Commodus. Both Lucilla and Lucius were saved by Crows Maximus from the embittered Roman Empire before the Gladiator passed on to be with his own slain family. Spoilers for Gladiator. 25-year-old movie. How old is it? I'm sure everyone's seen Gladiator by now. Um, but Paramount is behind the film. They're ready to go. Mm. And uh, uh, apparently the, the writer of Top Gun Maverick and the Batman... Peter Craig is writing the screenplay. It'll mm. be interesting. Interesting. I don't think Russell Crowe will be in it, obviously, because his character's dead. But um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Yeah. I love Gladiator. One of the best movies. Yeah. So good. Yep. We've got another movie filming at the moment. It's another reboot. I haven't so, watched that for a long time. It's like Gladiator. I watched it a few years ago. I made Alicia watch it. I haven't, I haven't seen it for years. On 4K. Watch the 4K too. <sighs> it's beautiful. I'll watch that on the big beautiful. telly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Willy Wonka has started filming the UK. This is the new version. It's got oh, yeah. Timothy Chalamet. He's playing Wonka. Not really keen on him, are you? No, I don't really like him. He's, oh, got, he's, he's another one. Like you with Daniel Craig, where you don't like his face. Is it all the expression? It's the same with Timothy That's Chalamet nice. to me. He just always looks like he's moody or just doesn't want to be there. Got the same expression. He's, it's that, I think it's that same thing. It's like that sort of like ooh, almost pretentious sort of look. Mm. It's almost just like a little bit like standoffish, yeah. maybe. That's what I think okay. I don't like about him. Fair enough. I'm sure he's a great guy, and if I ever get the chance to interview him. <laughs> I know Warner Brothers is trying to get me some interviews for June. So, <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, I'm open to having a nice little chat with you. I'm sure you're a wonderful guy. Uh, but, yeah, look, uh, I don't know. This is another fucking version of Willy Wonka. Rowan Atkinson, they've announced uh, uh, some more people who are going to be the cast. Rowan Atkinson, Olivia Coleman, and Sally Hawkins. What part's Atkinson going to play? No idea. But it's a, it's a prequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the original novel. Oh, right. Okay. So who knows? It could be just some random. could be Willy Wonka's dad or some shit. And who, what's Shalomai? Who's it? He's Wonka. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the studio well, has... If it was a pre- sorry, if it was a prequel, mm. what's Wonka doing there? Because he gave the factory to the kid. No, but see, if he'd let me... <laughs> <laughs> prequel, that would be a sequel if he gives the factory to the kid. Oh, yeah, no. Nah, sorry, yeah. No. Nah. Fucking hell, man. Jeez, I fucked that up, didn't yeah, I? <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've been going on Silly for Silly old bastard. Yeah, we've been going on too long today. <laughs> studio, the studios described the movie as an exploration of the vivid mythical beginnings of the imaginative young inventor before he becomes the renowned scrum Mozart of chocolate. It obviously takes place before the events of the Roald Dahl book, it mm. says. It's going to be directed by uh, Paul King, who directed Paddington 1 and 2. Uh, great movies, love them. Uh, he also co-wrote the script with Simon Farnaby, who was his co-writer on Paddington 2 as well. It's produced by David Heyman, who produced the Paddington films and produced the entire Harry Potter franchise. Um, he produced Gravity and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, amongst a whole other bunch of random stuff too. It's got some good people behind it. Um, I had that last version of Willy Wonka was absolute sh- dog shit. Yeah, yeah, that fucking Tim Burton one with uh, with, uh, with what's his face Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp playing Johnny Depp. 
as Johnny Depp. As yeah. Johnny Depp. The worst. That was the that one was of terrible. worst movies. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. The book is great. The worst. One of the worst things about that was the Oompa Loompas. Yeah, they were weird. It was just the same. It was the same guy. The that's same right. Guy played every Oompa Loompa. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And oh, they just like used. They just like stupid. doubled, like quadrupled him up on the screen. The, the stupidest, stupidest movie in the world. I can't stand it. Oh. Uh, but what I, I don't know. I, I kind of love the Willy Wonka book. I actually, I actually don't mind this. It sounds all right. I think yeah. I'm turning. I think I'm turning on it just a little bit. Um, Maybe I'm just maybe that's the hesitancy is that the last one was so shit. Uh, but if they do it properly, well maybe Atkinson, it's good. Coleman, yeah, Love it's got a good cast and like the the creatives behind it are terrific. Yeah, um, uh, the whole thing it sounds it's got so much going for it. Yeah, that it, rather than against it, I think. Yeah, I'll give it a go. I love the book Willy Wonka. I love. I think it was a sequel too. There was a sequel. It was called Charlie the Great Glass Elevator. That's right. Um, which they've never adapted properly. No. I, think, I think they go to the moon and shit. It's really weird. Oh, I've seen it, but I can't remember. Yeah. I remember I, one of the only things I really remember is the scene of the elevator shooting at the top of the... Oh, yeah, no, because at the end of the first movie, the elevator, they go in the elevator, yeah. it shoots out. But that's actually part of the second book, but they've never adapted the second book into a film. Didn't they? No. No, they well, never... Maybe I've read the second book. Maybe. Maybe. They never made... The only movies have been the Gene Wilder one yep. and... Tim Burton, oh, there you which go. was a remake. They never made Charlie the Great Glass Elevator, mm. which is like maybe this is maybe the they'll do this. Do that. Maybe they'll do a trilogy. There's the prequel. They'll remake Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and then do sequel. Yeah, I'd love to see Wonka in space. <laughs> I think they go to space, and I spent a long time since I, I just I can picture the cover. It's like the elevator shooting past the moon. Oh yeah, you are. But this is yep. the imagination of probably a six-year-old oh, just God, in there yeah. somewhere. Maybe, it, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm coming around on that one. We'll see. Only other one, uh, one, one tiny other little piece of news. Um, there's a new film heading to Apple starring Giorgio Clooney, George Clooney, mm. and Brad Pitt, Bradley Pittus, Bradley Pittles, mm. Brad Pitt, George Clooney. Um, they do some good stuff together. Oh, they do some great stuff together. Ocean, the Ocean's films, yeah. um, Burn After Reading they were in, uh, whatever else. Um, Apple has landed this film. He comes to us from John Watts, who is the director behind the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Spider-Man films. He's also um, working with Marvel on the current, uh, the upcoming Fantastic Four film as well. Uh, so Watts is obviously very well revered by Marvel, it's interesting to see what he's going to do outside of Marvel. Mm. He hasn't really done a lot. He's done a couple of smaller films prior to Spider-Man. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter says Watts will write, direct, and produce the thriller. Clooney and Pitt will star and produce via their respective production labels. The project will centre on two lone wolf fixers assigned to the same job. Oh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, this was apparently part of a massive bidding war between Sony, Lionsgate, Netflix, and apparently Amazon, Universal, MGM, and Warner Brothers were all interested in trying to grab it as well. So really, it's interesting to see now, particularly as it's all happened since this pandemic, is these streaming services being involved in these massive bidding wars with the studios. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of money to be yeah. thrown around. yeah. It's Apple. <laughs> oh, you're exactly right. How can you compete, really? Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> they got a little bit of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's crazy. It's just it's this whole last year has just changed the entire face of cinema. Mm. I mean, beforehand, like streaming services, the only like original movies they had, they would occasionally produce some, put some money up for some, but usually it was just stuff they'd bought from from the film, uh, the what do you call them, the um, film festivals. Yeah. Just independent things, they buy them up. And, but now they're actually bidding with studios to produce films. The big movies, fucking George Pitt, George Pitt, George Clooney and Brad Pitt. Mm. And like how many movies has Tom, Tom Hanks done for streamers? Oh, exactly right. The, ta- the calibre now. And it's not just movies that they are picking up after the fact. It is now... Apple is throwing money yeah. at this pro- at production to of actually be made. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sort of looking forward to that. Yeah. It'll be a couple of years down the track, obviously, but, you know. Probably. Probably a couple of years. I'm not sure. I don't think yeah. I have a date on there. But No, they always um, do good shit together. Yeah, for sure. Looking forward to that one. Uh, that is the end of the news. I won't play the news theme to round it out because it's long. 
Yeah, fair uh, we'll just get straight into. Well, this is usually where we do subscriber questions. We only have a couple of things. I'm, I'm sticking to. I've had, like I said earlier, a lot of people wrote in this week. Just, just irregular amount of people writing in this week. So it's a couple of just nice little letters that came in, and also a couple of little questions. So we'll just go through these, and then we'll round the show out. So the first one's Nathan. Yeah, you want to read that out? Nathan McCabe from uh, he's a patron supporter. Thank you yep. very much. He also wrote. He sent an, an additional message to me through Instagram. I won't read that, uh, but he's having a bit of a tough time at the moment, and he said his podcast, the podcast, is kind of getting him through at the moment, oh, which good. is really wonderful. That's good. Um, Take it easy, buddy. Yeah, I uh, hope all is uh, is well with the family down in Melbourne. I noticed you guys watch quite a few movies and TV shows together. Growing up was uh, growing up was it always something you look forward to? Was there like a dedicated night for the family to sit down and watch something together, like a Friday night movie night? Also with the Blu-ray haul videos, is there? Well, actually, for, we'll get this first question done first. Uh, dedicated night for family to sit down and watch some movies. Um, it was always Friday, Friday Saturday night. night. Yeah, wasn't it? Like yeah, uh, we'd go down to the video shop and hire yeah. videos ah, and blockbuster. The smell, you can still smell it. Yeah, I know. The smell of it Musky. and just the whole, mm. the whole atmosphere was getting down there amongst other people and yeah. getting the disc before they got them and well, VHS at the time it probably was. Oh, v- yeah, VHS um, and a lot of, yeah. VHS so, yeah, so really DVDs. it was a Friday night, Saturday night thing and we'd hire yeah. a couple of overnighters and mm. and, a, and five weeklies. Five weeklies. Usually it cost us about 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it was. Yeah, that's where, that is where my introduction to cinema really came, that blockbuster, just going, just buy, just picking up whatever I could off the shelf. Yep. Just a lot of my favourite movies yep. come from just picking up stuff at Blockbuster and loving it. Um, so, yeah, but sometimes I think particularly towards the end, like VHS definitely was all like we'd hire them a lot when I was a bit younger. But then a lot of DVDs as well, probably the last maybe three or four years of, yeah. of the blockbuster stores. And we go in, we get heaps of them. And um, sometimes it would be like a Thursday night after basketball training or yeah, something. Yeah. We'd go and we'd get some yep. for the weekend yep. and then return them on the Saturday yep. night or whatever, or the Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, because often the overnighters were two night, weren't they? Yeah, you hide them for two nights. Yeah, and even now it's sort of like don't really watch movies during the weeks; just TV stuff. So much to watch. Mm. And we'll, watch we'll watch a movie. Yep, I enjoyed watching movies on a Friday night or a Saturday night, Sunday night. Yep, which is about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, second part of his question, also with the Blu-ray mm. haul videos, is there a possibility to have old mate Rick join in on one in the future and show if his side of the hall to show his side of the hall too? Well, you used to do that. You did a few in did the I? past, yeah. Um, well, maybe not. We did a we did an international hall when yeah, I was overseas. That, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I yeah. I used to show sort of like, oh, this is my hall. This is all mate Rick's hall. I don't think you're ever really in them though. Um, I still, I think now I just throw everything together. Yeah, um, right. I don't know. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm trying to, to kind of. I only do one a month now, mm. and I this uh, maybe this is a good point, to, a good place to plug the third channel. I can pop in and just say good day yeah. on one or two, yeah, and it's not really my thing. No, it's just to like sit there and out. ramble on about crap all the time. Well, <laughs> well, apart from the apart from this. guys just sat on a podcast <laughs> for an hour and fifty minutes. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I like. This is a good place to plug the third channel. It's going to be started. I'll probably put a link down below. It's going to be called Dave. I think it's going to be called Dave Lee Down Under Extra or Dave Lee Down Under Plus or something. Mm. Essentially, I'm going to use it as just um, a place where I put content that's lower performing. Yeah. Um, if you know anything about the algorithm on YouTube, um, lower performing content will naturally drag down everything else. It affects the algorithm so badly that um, it starts affecting other videos, performance of other videos and your channel as a whole. Now, you see there is still getting like two, three, four thousand 4,000 views sometimes, mm. but that's much lower than like an evolution, which will get yeah. fifty to 300,000 views, yep. a million views. So anyway. so And that's we, why the podcast was put on a separate channel. Yeah, that's exactly why the podcast on another channel. And it's also like length as well. Like it'll look at like, oh, you've done a two-hour podcast – Oh, no one's watching these two-hour videos, so let's don't push this out to anyone. Yeah. Um, or it'll be like, oh, you do like a five-minute video, and everyone loves the five-minute videos, so it only pushes the five-minute videos out to people instead yep. of the two-hour ones. Anyway, right. so I'm to- I'm going to do another – I'm going to be doing a third channel, which is where all the Blu-ray hauls – I'm getting less and less views on them now because people just aren't interested in physical media. such a mm. small, narrow gap now. So it's going to be like – 
hauls, probably some Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews that I feel like probably aren't going to perform very well on the main channel. It's going to be a good just kind of place to put mm. them. Um, and I'm just hoping I can, like, again, I know I, I fucking, I've got you subscribed to two channels already, but I would really love <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to yeah. hand over to the third channel. It's not just about monetization, but it's about, um, I think, particularly with the Blu-ray stuff, I know the stu- the distributors the sending me in so much stuff and I really, really appreciate it. And I want it to get out to as many eyes. So all the people who do watch these things, I want you to subscribe to that sec- that third channel and so you can get those notifications. I, of course, will blast them over on the main channel and stuff. I think the performance of them will stay about the same, but it's just about yeah. I just want their support over on that on that platform. But all too. the main stuff will stay on the main channel. Oh, yeah, there we go. All yeah. The, yeah. What do you call them? The evolutions? The evolutions and, and all that stuff. I'm, I will still, like I said, I will, stuff. I will still post these in the main channel, so they will still be on the homepage and... I'll send out like the community board posts and stuff. It's just a matter of just analytically not having the analytics, the analytical side of these videos affecting these other videos. That's right. So they stay on their That's own right. side. But uh, yeah, so head over. There's a link down below. Please head over to Daily Down Under Extra or Plus, whatever the hell I'm going to call it. Mm. Sub. Uh, that was kind of unrelated, but I found it as a nice little segue there. Yeah. The videos yeah. will continue. I want to keep doing them. I want to keep supporting. Uh, physical media and stuff like that. I want to keep supporting these distributors, but I want that. I need to have that backing too. Yeah, that's the right. supporter backing. Uh, okay, next one. What's the next one? I've lost my place here. Lost your place. Anthony has written in. Anthony, there we go. Anthony Fisher. Yep. Uh, I really look forward to your Bond evolution. What is your favourite Bond film or films? I grew up on the Brosnan era, <laughs> so I have. To give mine to Goldeneye. I, don't, I think we answered a question like this a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, what's your favourite Bond? I don't have one because <laughs> I don't like Bond. <laughs> but if if it was anything, it'd be one of the probably Roger Moore, Roger Moore, and, and um, Connery. Connery maybe. Mm. It's tough. I think probably probably the Connery. I love the Connery films. Yeah. I'd say probably Doctor No is probably my favourite. Uh, I really love Live and Let Die, which is the first Roger Moore one. Um, but I, lo- I really love, like, some of the Daniel Craig films. Skyfall, Casino Royale, both great. Um, but even after doing this at Bond Evolution, um, I remembered how much I loved On Her Majesty's Secret Service, which is the lone film that George Lazenby did, the Australian actor. Uh, it's actually a really good film. Um, and it's made me want to reassess the Timothy Dalton ones as well, because I've always said I didn't yeah. like them. But just researching them and even watching clips and bits and pieces of them doing that video... Makes me want to reassess them, go back and rewatch them. So, mm. anyway, there's your long winded answer to that one. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you might want to read the next one out. It's just a. Derek uh, Martin? Oh, this is just. A, I think it's just a. I don't think it's a question. Oh, yeah, this is one for you. Actually, one for you. So, I'll read this to you. Well, sort of oh, for okay. you. For both of us. But yeah. you'll like this one. Hi, Dave and Rick. I have been meaning to write into the pod for a while now. Uh, I hope you are both coping well with the lockdown. I know somewhat how you feel, as in Ireland. We have long periods of hard lockdowns over the last two years, but have been gradually opening for the last month or two, and things are looking stable. It's good. That's great to hear. Uh, I started listening to the podcast a number of months ago since Dave appeared on The Weekly Planet, one of my (laughs) favourite podcasts ever. Uh, What got me hooked into the podcast is the chemistry between you both, and most importantly, the Beatles conversation you had in episode 30-something. Mm. That's that episode where the camera shut off. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, that's right. Combo, yeah. Yeah. Um, he says it's that. still going, is it? Yeah, yeah, still, yeah. still running. <laughs> Thank God. Um, uh, he says, um, uh, Derek says, the that reignited a passion for the Beatles I once had but lost over the years, although I always listened to their music on and off. It's got me so hooked on them that I recently booked a trip to fly across the water to Liverpool with my girlfriend and check out all the Beatles history and do all the Beatles touristy stuff. I can't thank you both enough for reigniting that love of the Beatles music I once had. Awesome. That is very cool to hear. Yeah. Great. Very it's cool. it's funny it's funny cuz I go in and out of the Beatles as well. Yeah. I mean I'll never I'll never yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll never stop loving what mm. the, what they did and what the, and their music and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But there will be I could go a year without hearing mm. any of their music yeah. and then something will tw- yeah. trigger it off and I'll just listen to it ad nauseum. I'm the same. I don't think I'd listen to them for, a very, for maybe two or three years. And then, like, recently there's been a lot more stuff, like the Let It Be thing. Yeah, and it's just something like that where you twig and you're like, yeah, hang on, I'll listen to this. And you just get caught in that. Like, yeah. kinda, it's well, it's kind of like, like we talked about this earlier, Coldplay, one of my favourite bands ever, 
they have a new album coming out next month, and like in a couple of weeks. And it's the first time I've not been excited for a Coldplay album. So I didn't even know. Yeah. I love, I love Cold, everything Coldplay has done. They've had well. a couple of singles out, and the singles are great, like really yep. great. And it's just like I caught myself out today. I'm like, why am I not excited? Why am I not excited for this new Coldplay album? Mm. Usually in the past, I would be like, oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just like, that's kind of weird how that happens. I don't yeah. know. I'm feeling maybe. It's a bit of a tangent, a bit different, but I'm feeling maybe I'm getting that age now where it's just like, I don't know, maybe it's just old, maybe it's just older music now. It's just stuff I don't. Well, I think I think when when they first started back yeah. in what early two thousands, oh, yeah, yeah. it was new, it was fresh, yeah. it was different, and every and every album after mm, that yeah, was, was different. different to the one before. Yeah. But now it's all it's all the same, all blending, and they could all be off the same album. I feel like they have gone really commercial now. Oh as yeah, well. exactly. And right. particularly the last, well, maybe not the last album that they did. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like that really kind of Arabic infused. It was yep. really stripped back. That was very different. Mm. Um, but I, a few of the albums around it have all been very similar. Yeah, exactly. It's almost right. like they just found this groove where they're. Just they're comfortable, that, they're happy, yeah. they can make easy music and like, easy money. Like their latest song, which I haven't heard yet, is a collaboration with BTS, which is that okay. K-pop group. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of thing they never really would have done in the past. No. So just well, maybe not, that's about them trying to stay relevant. Oh, exactly right. Well, they were the As biggest, you said, older, older music. Yeah, I think that's probably it. I think it's just older now, and maybe they're just older music, and it's just like got to that point now where it's like, oh, Coldplay, they're still making music, are they? Mm. And I was, ne- I thought that'll never happen. I would love it, but it's. I think it's that point. Yeah. It happened with U2 as well. I loved U2 for so long, and then it got to a point where it was like, this is all the same now. Yep. I don't even care. Exactly right. I don't think I've listened to the last couple of albums. No, but you'll go back and you'll listen to something and I'll read yeah. and you'll think, oh, Jesus yeah. Christ, this is really good. Yeah, well, that's what I'm like with you yeah. too. I'll occasionally I'll go back to like All That You Can't Leave Behind or um, uh, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb or The Joshua Tree and just great albums. And mm. you're like, shit, I loved it. So I see where you're coming from. So funny, the funny thing with you too, because I grew up, well, I didn't yeah. grow up. Well, it was the sixties, but well, during the twenties, during the yeah, during the eighties and stuff, when I was in my twenties yeah. and whatever, um, I was never really into them. I didn't yeah. really enjoy their early stuff. No, a lot of their early stuff. I don't really. It was their latest stuff yeah. that I really enjoyed. Yeah, because it was really kind of eighties rock, wasn't it? If you talk about yeah. like the War album or Boy, yep. or um, you know, just the stuff kind of that era. Yeah, it's there was very, nothing really different to me. There was no. nothing really different or special about it. But it's when like, but their latest stuff was a lot. I think was a lot better. Like the pop album is probably the turning point. I love that pop album. Yeah, yeah I love that. Where they yeah. kind of started doing something a bit different. But anyway, back to back yeah. to. Yeah, it's great to hear you back, awesome. in, back into the Beatles, mate. We, we did the can do can do nothing wrong with listening to the Beatles. Ah, like ah, it's just great. such great stuff. Yeah, we did the all the Liverpool stuff a number of years. Yeah, ago. we did all that five years, six years ago. Oh no, it would have been uh, yeah, two thousand fifteen. Yeah, six years ago. It's great. We did six, the, seven, we did the magical mystery tour. Yeah, <laughs> we did the tours of the of Went Paul to Paul's and house and yeah. John's house and the Cavern Club. Yeah, which is great. We saw a um. A and Beatles. where did we? And we're sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, we saw a Tragic Beatles tribute band. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at the Cavern Club. It had to. Yeah, exactly right. You've got to do that when you're there. Yeah, yeah. And the hotel we stayed in? Oh, yeah. The Oh, what was it? The Hard Hard Day's Night Hotel? Was that um, it? What was it called? I think it was called the Hard, day, a hard Day's Night. Because you had a it's hard to, day. It's just around the corner yeah, from, the, right from the Cavern Yeah, it's Cavern a Beatles. Club. It's, it was, it was all right. It was okay. Yeah. It's just a Beatles theme Not hotel. as bad as the Elvis Hotel oh, in Memphis. God, that was oh, awful. It's not, it actually smelled like piss. Yeah. The room we're in, it was mouldy, and the it was heart, just awful. The Heartbreak Hotel it was a real heartbreak. It was, <laughs> yeah, and it was down at the end of Lonely Street. It was, it was too, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the Beatles one, yeah, it's great. It's, Liverpool's really good. Go check out the. I'm sure you're all on it because there's a beat. There's the Beatles music down the dock. Yep. Uh, which is so? Did I say the museum? Sorry, down the dock. Museum. Which is really great. Um, all of it's good. It's just so fun. Strawberry Fields. You'll get to go see. That's yeah. open now. They've opened that. Oh, as have like they? A, yeah, it's open as like a public. Space. Just a public park. Like a, yeah. Bugger, we weren't there then. <laughs> I know. We go back. Yeah. Oh, well, you were hidden over that way well, soon, I might be, hopefully. Yeah. I want to get Alicia down there to the Liverpool and see the Beatles shit. But, yeah, you will love it, Derek. So that's really cool to hear. So thank you so much. Um, he says, I continue to listen to the pod every week and enjoy every moment of listening. I hope you can forgive me for this, but I haven't watched Ted Lasso yet. I get kn- on it! I knew someone else had written in about Ted Lasso this week. He says he hasn't watched it yet, but based on your reviews, it is next on my list. Thank you for the great content and keep up the positive work. All the best, Derek. 
Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Derek. Really we good love to hear. It. Appreciate it. Really we love we love letters like this. If you if anyone wants to send in any kind of letters, we will always read it out on the podcast. Uh, sometimes it may take me a while to actually respond to the email but I do like to respond to you on the podcast and yeah, awesome. get you all involved. So well, that's great. Thanks so much for that. We appreciate it. To everyone who's written in, sending shite or rights, it's great. I love it. I have everyone's just kind of really in on it. The world's worst scorekeeper. Thanks for your good work <laughs> and shit and uh, all that. You're all great. So at that, let's close out the show. We've gone forward it on two hours once more. Um, okay, the podcast, of course, go out every single Monday on all the podcasts and platforms. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible. The visual element is available to view on YouTube. That goes out two days early to patron supporters. Patreon.com forward slash David down under the sign up for as little as $1 a month. Cheap, 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 cheap. Very cheap. Uh, the videos are on that separate channel, so hit that subscribe button down below if you're over there. If not, head over there and hit it. Uh, of course, you can head over to my third channel as well and hit subscribe on that. There'll be content coming to that channel probably next month or maybe in the next few weeks, so start yeah. propping yeah. up some content. But head over there and give it a head start if you can, please. Uh, you can find me on on YouTube. The main channel is David Down Under. Um, also on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, there's links in the description of every podcast for that too. Otherwise, just search me. You'll find me. If you want to write into the show, you want to send a shot all right, you want to send a letter, you want to whatever, DaveLeePod at gmail.com is the best place to get to me. If you're listening on podcast platforms, please leave a review and a rating. Only good ones. Because they help. Piss uh, off with the bad ones. Fuck them off, yeah. YouTube, pre- YouTube <laughs> preview for the, for the week, I was going to say for the month. For the week, um, I just uploaded the James Bond Evolution. Uh, get on that, view it. Because it's a pop culture evolution, which means it doesn't perform as well as the cartoon yeah. ones. But I'm trying to expand, trying to branch out. It's good for my brain also to just do, do something, something a little different. bit different. Yeah. Um, I kind of fully expected this one to not do very well. But head over there and view it, please. I really appreciate it. I put a lot of work into it and I just love you to see it. Um, I also put up a trailer breakdown for Disney's Encanto uh, over the last week. If you want to check that one out, my full thoughts and everything on that, you can check that one out. This week, I'm going to have that review for the Muppets Haunted Mansion up. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to checking that one out. The Muppets stuff over the last few years has not impressed me, but I think this one should be pretty good. Um, and I might be reviewing Just Beyond, which is the R.L. Stein thing for Disney+. Plus. I don't know. I'll have to check it out and see what I think. Uh, other than that, that is it. I'm going to be... I, I don't know what else is going out this week, but i really got to work on getting some better content out. Anyway, thanks to mate Rick for joining me along. <laughs> thanks, Dave. And uh, thanks everyone out there for watching, for listening, for sending shit in. We appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next thanks one. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay at home. Get vaxxed. And stay happy. Cheers. Yeah, just be happy, guys. Just be happy. Make the best of a bad situation. I exactly suppose. right. Take it easy, guys. See you on the next one. <laughs>